Welcome into the Cam and Strick Podcast, episode number 232, presented by Hair Club. For Yikes. men and women, and um, men there's and women a do. number of different uh, individuals they can help you out with, Cam, as you know. women. Women. Can you uh, close the window, dude? My oh, allergies man. are just absolutely crushing me right you now. Got red eyes, boy. Do you I? need some clear eyes. Not Visine. <laughs> clear eyes. Visine. All you out there. They still all make you, that? All you all out there, man. If you get down with it. Your eyes are fucked up, and you need to clear them up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Don't buy Visine. Buy the Clear Eyes version. It's ten times better. Just a little tidbit for all y'all out there. I've been doing this since I was a kid. Dude, what My are you, what are you doing, like, uh, reviews on, on yes, the Clear Eyes? Yes, I had to put Clear Eyes in all the time so you don't look stone-cold Steve that Austin in front of people. Work, yes, it does no, work. It, doesn't. it maybe makes them <laughs> less red. It doesn't open them well, up. White as, white as can be. It doesn't open them up. No, you're still No, you're still sagging, but they're not... Fucking, you know, bloodshot out the wazoo, so it's really obvious. My eyes, you know, if you put clear eyes in, it'll it'll make you look somewhat normal. Okay, well. That's all. You know, well, thanks that's for that all, advice. Andy, that's all, Andy. little advice. Sometimes I give advice out, and that's... Uh, and that's well, uh, you needed it before our last meeting on Friday, to be honest with you. I mean, I mean, we had a what? meeting on Friday. I mean, Cam... Hey, listen, any business out there that wants to have a meeting with us, make yeah. sure you uh, you can you can you know do the Zoom at your own risk if you want to have the Zoom. If it's the middle well, of the afternoon, was, for it was Cam a, Friday. On a Friday. We're talking to a young kid that's you know in a hockey. Young kid, he's way older than you. Is he? Oh my! He God. looks like and our he's age. Not a hockey guy. Oh, at all. Okay. He's like a so what? business guy. Uh, yeah, but he seemed pretty cool. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> but we talked to a guy. And I was just in my. Weekend mode and cracking a beer and maybe I, maybe I puffed on something and and I I kind of like got away from the camera and I sat down and I'm like oh boy and then he's like what the fuck are you doing and I'm like ah oh, sorry the guy's okay with well, I I didn't mean to do that and and he's like don't do that and I'm like okay my bad mm-hmm. so I apologize like, no man. I appreciate that dude I know when I'm wrong man yeah like, I do so you knew uh, then yeah I'm you like, were kind of whispering because you didn't want Kate to know about this why the hell does she care well you were kind of she would tell you dude. Oh, she lets you know, dude. I've heard it before. Um, yeah, about what doing does. that in front of people? No, she, she just lets you know when you make a mistake. <laughs> oh God, yeah. She'll let you know. Oh, when I'm mean put, to you, she'll put you in your when place. When I'm mean to you, you haven't been mean. What? Well, what are you talking about? The other day I was. Remember when? When we were doing the intro. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I that was, was a pissy you, mood. You weren't mad. You weren't mean. You were just jealous that I was getting a uh, <sighs> a farmhouse. <laughs> yeah, I just wasn't a pissy mood that day. My bad. I did. Uh, I did have a nice weekend, man. Like, that is a perfect weekend for me. Friday night, thunderstorms are coming. I'm sitting on my back deck. I got my mind right. There's fucking games on out the wazoo. I'm watching this weather system come through. The anvil clouds are blowing up right in my backyard. And any one of those anvil clouds blow up like that, that could uh, they could produce or spawn a tornado at any time if everything goes didn't right. Happen. It happen. Not here, but it did everywhere else, you know Andy. Oh, hold on, hold on a second. In my house, I don't care. Shine, dude. I, and yeah, I know. It doesn't matter if it rains. That means nothing to anything. A tornado could spawn one way or the other. It was there. It just didn't spawn near us. It spawned in Iowa. It just missed Missouri for the most part. There was one in Arkansas that went for 170 miles. No, it just missed us. But the point is, I'm watching this, man, like this anvil cloud. If you ever look that up, and that's where this, all that pressure is going up in this sky and all of a sudden the sun was going down so the sun made it look like it was burning and it's like that fucking cloud can turn into a real life monster and it's just f- cool to see weather come in i was chilling it was windy i had a good weekend man well i want to give a shout out to those in iowa and those in yeah, Arkansas dude, they got who rocked. got rocked they got it, rocked you so know and, and 30 people the died. weather people yeah so we're thinking about all of them um yeah Dude, I want to have my weatherman rankings here in town. I want to start good like, ones, man. I mean, I want to put out my top five. That has got to be it's a good, one it's of a, the most tough. difficult jobs is when you're a weatherman and you got to like fill for like 45 minutes. Yeah, I do. And they're like sending 45. you, well, two hours, I'll whatever Five it is. hours sometimes. Well, I don't, but this wasn't the case this time. No, no, but yeah, it has been. It has been. Dude, go on YouTube and watch the weather, weather people. That let's say the more Oklahoma tornado in 2013 that fucked so much EF5 and it was like clear out too. It wasn't rain. I think that was a four, dude. It it was. What are you talking about? I think that that was a three or a four, was it? So anyway, you watch those. You go back on YouTube and you just watch the the weather guy the whole time 
and he's there for six hours. He's just sweating, and his sleeves are pulled up. He's not like, sweating. Bah, 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 bah. Da, 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 bah. Oh, now this is coming. Now we got another track. Okay, all you here in Franklin County, get down now. And there's another one. See, look at the hook echo. Look at the hook echo. And he's on. They're going. They're going. They're going. It's awesome, that's dude. It's not crazy. what I'm looking for. See, that's what I'm looking for. No, because these dudes that the fact that they're not sweating, and the fact that they stay so calm, and they're able to like because. The viewer at home needs them to be calm, Cam. I mean, if they had yeah, you know. on there, like, oh, sweating I, I, and... Oh, I'd scare the oh shit out of everybody. Oh, my God. Everybody would be, like... I'm not doing that. The, the, the entire state would be in their basement. Well, if they had you there, everybody would die because you'd be like, Ugh, what's going on here? I mean, Cam would be like, it's sunny out Cam right now. Like, it's rain-wrapped. Like, you know, you just can't do that. Well, at least I so, would know what's going on. So I look for the uh, the weather people because there can be men and women weather people, Cam, as you know. It's not just weather men. You can't... You know you can't say that. It's uh, there's weather women and there's weather men. Yeah, I know. Okay, so Yoink. the ones that are calm and who are able to react on the fly, unscripted. You got producers putting up radar images and scans that they haven't even looked at yet, and to be able to read it, be under control, sleeves up, no sweating. And, uh, and they're looking in that camera, and they know exactly what's going on, man. That's what I'm looking Dude, for. Dude, I just so, explained So that. I am, like, you know, going to put out my rankings. So if anybody wants to submit some, uh, some contenders and any weather people that are out there, some candidates who would make sense, please send them some my way ones. so I can start evaluating and put together my rankings. There's some good ones, man. But I, I do have another grievance. And they're very smart, Cam. I, yeah, of course they are. I like that, dude. I just again, I, I watch the Weather Channel all weekend. I love it, man. But um, but God, I just there's some things I just don't understand. I know I've bitched about this before, but like I got uh, Kate and I were cruising around. We had no top on the Jeep. The doors were off. The fucking all I that thought shit. those were for high school kids. I, I know. Mean, no, 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 I know no. they kind of. I got to call you th- out on I don't this. Th- I don't. Well, they're giving it to me to, to. They want. They want it to be cool, so they want me to drive it. To get the the shit kickers to like that stuff, mm-hmm. Andy. They don't want you driving the damn thing because they're going to lose business doing it. But they got a guy like me in there. I could take the doors off. I could take the top down. I got Kate. We're cruising. We're doing our thing. It's a Sunday. I don't want to drive that fucking thing on the highway. Because, you got the doors on? No, they're off. It's was scary. It, was it hard to take them on and off? Yes. I thought so. Really? Yeah. You got to have Be a Be honest. Put- did your neighbor come over and help you do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I course. knew. I knew. Jesus. So your neighbor came over to do it for you? Well, Kate and I were doing it, but then he had it. It, it, it wasn't that hard, but but you have to put them somewhere, man. If you're a dipshit kid and you give your kid a Jeep, they're going to screw up those doors so bad. Where do you, you put them? Like, you just you put gotta, them on the ground. You got to get right? like a moving blanket to put them on in the garage, oh, on, the, on the ground. Really? No, Andy. Exactly. No, they'll get chipped up. You got to, you got to, so you got to you place it all in your garage. Where's but, the roof go? So what? In the garage. Or actually the roof, you put it in a little thing. You put it in the back of the Jeep. Anyway, Wait, it doesn't matter. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is it like a push button? No. Because a lot of these now unscrew, I know, take off. Oh, you unscrew. got the old school model. You got the cheap. Model. I didn't get anything. They oh want me to. It's a brand new. Because I've seen these. It's cam, a high tide. My brother in law has because a Jeep really is like a third car nowadays for like an. It's a adult. toy. It's a toy. But they're great cars. I've always liked them. But he literally pushes the button, dude. Well, good for him, Andy. And it comes I didn't off. have that one, so I got to do so it you myself. Gotta, like wind it up. Yeah, but his was cloth. Mine was. No, his is a hard top. Whatever. I don't, I don't care. It's you mean soft top? Yeah, mine's a hard tie. Is yours pink, soft top, two door, no, small I got, wheels I got a black, with flames on the side? I got a black high tie with huge, it's lifted and stuff. It's pretty cool looking. Small what, wheels on that, w- I No, saw. it's gigantic wheels. No, I told you they were small. Andy, no, they're and not. You said bigger wheels Andy, with Andy, I'm looking at your goofy ass car right now. You're driving a <laughs> Volvo, like a woman's car. Can I tell car. you what happened, by the no, way? No, I'm not I'll done, I'm not done talking. Right, let me get my grievance out. Okay. Damn. Grievance. Anywho. So Kate and I are chilling at the top off, all the doors. We're cruising down Bassett Road, way out yonder. Heading into Eureka to go to a, for, for brunch. And we're having a good time. We're on this road with the drop off. There's no fucking, there's no uh, uh, shoulder. Shoulder. I mean, listen, there's no shoulder at all. And it's a dangerous, windy ass, hilly road. Mm-hmm. And these fucking cyclists, dude, it's unbelievably, how, unbelievable how dangerous it is. And it's always an old couple or a gang of them. And they're going two miles an hour and you cruise around. And you're going like 30, 45, and I drive slow. And all of a sudden, you have to slam on your brakes. Slam on your Why damn brakes because they're, these cyclists are like, I'm getting a workout in, okay? My workout is more important than anybody else we're doing. So if I'm going to be on this, you're going to have to stop and look out for us. It's unbelievably dangerous. Mm. Why do they do that? I don't 
fucking no. Not one shoulder, no shoulder anywhere, and you literally have to slam on your brakes. And if I'm, if my wife's like, I would never let you do that. If my wife wanted to do that, I'd be like, hell no. I'll drive you to the park. There's a billion places to ride bikes, and these jackasses, man, they think they own the road, they think they rule the road, and they, they don't even care. They don't even look at you. They don't smile. They don't do shit. And I had to slam my brakes on twice, and it was scary. I almost caught one of them. They were going so fucking slow around a corner, and there's nowhere them for, the, to, for them to move. The other time, another car was coming, and I almost had a head-on collision with them. Mm-hmm. It's getting ridiculous. So now, I don't fucking wave to these assholes anymore. I drive by, now the top's off and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, nerd! Oh, it, God. Yeah, I'm done with it. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, no, 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 it's happening. Dude, that's no, not... No, it's happening. That's not cool. No, 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 it's happening. That's not and cool. I, I, no, I'm, you would I, never I, no, survive no, no, no. in the high elevation oh, Jesus. in a mountain town. It's yeah, not a mountain where, town. Where people are working, it's not a mountain working town. out, getting exercise. I got construction workers driving big ass it's Dodge Rams. It's a beautiful Rams. day. They out. need to. They got to go to work and shit. This is not even just on the weekends. This is like uh, during the week too. It's out of control. I don't understand. The danger is crazy the level of danger is crazy you got 16 year old kids that know what the fuck they're doing and they're texting and driving the well, whole time and then you so got, worry about them dude no, not the they're cyclists. the ones that are the, they're the ones that are going to kill the cyclist the 16 year old kid going home with his buddies and he's t- and he, it's a windy road and he's not aware that there's bikers cyclists and he's going to run them from behind no, i think you're going to lose this one I think lose this one from what, Andy? Well, what am I? This is who am on, I this going is against? On the sixteen-year-olds. It doesn't I matter. Mean, you're, you're, okay, how about the the, kid, the guy going to work and he's driving around and he's, okay, he's going listen, to steal. There is some risk involved. Now, usually in a like in a real town, you have the bike lane. Unfortunately, no bike lane there's no bike lane there. in a lot of these communities here in the state it goes because somewhere. we are we are behind. But Cam, when you're a cyclist, okay, and I've known many cyclists over the years. In fact, I had a bike that you was would, stolen. You would hang out the with the cyclists, eh? Oh, I had a buddy you would. that would literally ride his bike. He'd have it all weighed down, Cam. I mean, packs after pack after pack after pack. He would ride his bike from Arizona to, like, Steamboat, Colorado, hey, dude. Well, that's cool, man. No, I know. It's very cool. But, like, there's guys that that take their, their cycling. I, I, I get it, man. Dude, like the, the, the cyclists... In reality, are part of the road. You have to respect them as part of the no, road. No, they're not. When there's no bike no, lane, they're not. you just got to be aware. They're not part of the road. But when you're a cyclist. Not out there. And out where you're driving, where it's a beautiful drive, and you're cruising windy roads, and it's nice dude, out, man. go to a trail. That's where they want to bike. Go to the trail. It's so dangerous, But dude. they're road cyclists. It's they're not so trail cyclists. They, they don't, go to they a don't road that has a bike They don't have the tires for the trails. They got tires for roads. Get out of here, man. Just be cool to these people, Dude, man. I no, I'm, I'm done with them. And they're not old. Dude, they, they look old, and they look good. They're all dressed like Lance Armstrong, like they're competing in some competition. Mm-hmm. You don't do shit. You're not going fast, <laughs> and your ass is still the fat. The aerodynamic Dude, helmet. screw all of them, man. They don't even wave you. They don't look at you. So now I'm chirping. Now I'm going to chirp them. Dude. I'm gonna you're I'm gonna a, honk my horn next. Year, year, go, ah, I'm gonna scare the shit out of them. I'm done with it. You're a get off my lawn. Not with When it comes to that, when I'm, you know... Like, I got to literally slam on my brakes. Why? You don't see them in advance? There's a... Dude, there's turns well, and stuff. Well, you know they may be there, so you got to slow I it do, down. I do, but I had to slam my brakes on, and I almost had a head on, and I'm mm. done with it. Mm. So now they're getting chirped. It's all good. No big deal. You know what I've been watching, Cam? What? I got into this documentary. Have you seen uh, the documentary about the, uh, the hatchet-wielding hitchhiker? No. You hadn't? No, Andy. Do you like, remember Andy, that Andy, story? It's on Netflix right a, now. Ten billion stories. There like has that. never been a story like this. I thought for sure you would have watched uh, this. I'll get into it. It was weather. I was watching the Weather Channel all weekend. Okay, you don't watch the local weather because I'm. I I'm, do all of it because I'm yeah. ranking the local meteorologist. No, I, yeah, yeah, I know, Andy. Yeah. Which no one's going to give a shit about. And I had a weather uh, you think radio in when I was a kid. like, yeah, talk about St. Louis weather people. They don't care. Okay, so that's not important. <laughs> hey, well, people. I mean, some of them, and and Damn, they're not all cool. good. I will say that some people are really made for it. And in this type of situation, when the weather goes down and shit goes down, Cam, when the wind is swirling and, and you've got tornadoes, which is very strange because in my week. neck of the woods, we, I mean, we had nothing. We had nothing here, but we had anvil clouds. It was forming. It doesn't mean rain doesn't oh, mean Oh, Cam's anything. sending me text messages like trying to like freak me out. He's well, like, oh. I just said there's twin tornadoes he's in like, Iowa. He's like, it's coming. Why don't, you it's put, coming. why don't you turn it on the weather channel? Like they're showing twin tornadoes I in Iowa. I had it on. It was awesome. Anyway, the hatchet wielding. Uh, his name's Kai, Kai the hatchet wielding uh, hitchhiker. So he's like this young dude, all like kind of hippied out. He reminds me of a guy like I'd I'd meet on like uh, 
you know, at like a fish show or something yeah. like that, you know, who's all spun out and just, you know, kind of, you know, whatever. So, acid. oh yeah. And, and so he, um, apparently was driving in a car with a guy and the guy said he was like Jesus, the other guy. So he was like all kind of like, you know, had some, you know, crazy shit going on anyway. Mm-hmm. And I guess he drove right into a car and a bunch of people got injured <laughs> One of the construction members, he drove into like a construction scene. Oh, ain't no good. And one of the construction workers got pinned up against the car, got seriously hurt. Anyway, the guy who was driving the car, he's all fucked up. I mean, he's on some type of hallucinogenic drug, whatever. Finds out actually that the, the hatchet wielder rolled him a joint, I believe, and then like laced it with something. PCP, baby. Is that oh, what it is? Oh, yeah, I've had that happen. So he even told him in the car by another source. I don't know if this ever came out or was proven in court, but another source came out and said... Um, that the hitchhiker was bragging to people that, hey, I was telling them, you know, you can't handle your ship, but now you're a ghost. See that car right there? Drive through it. You can drive right oh, through it. God. And the guy, like, whatever. So anyway, the crazy guy who was driving who said he was Jesus gets out, starts attacking people. And he attacks this woman. He's, like, got her in a chokehold. He's attacking her. Nobody can get him off of her. Well, the hatchet-wielding hitchhiker, who was picked up by this driver because he was hitchhiking, yeah, right? Yeah. He goes and, like, Attacks this dude who had this woman with a hatchet, gets him in the head and everything, Cam, with the sharp end of the hatchet, and saves the woman's life. And he's made out to be a hero, dude. Anyway, he he ends up ending up in New York, like uh, took a ride out to New York, meets this dude, and the guy was in his seventies who bought him like a train ticket, whatever. Goes back to his house and ends up. Uh, killing the 70 year old now he says it was in self-defense because he says he was raped by the 70 year old man jesus christ okay is this story gonna end no ever, so think? so he goes from being overnight sensation yeah. reality show hero jimmy kimmel, jimmy kimmel jimmy. to all of a sudden now being wanted for murder yeah and there's like a nationwide manhunt but they don't know where to find him because he's homeless and they end up finding him and uh he got sentenced to like 57 years in prison and he is uh, claiming self-defense and all this but he's all mentally you know He's ate up. He's ate up. That's yeah. exactly it. So go watch this uh, documentary on Netflix, dude. I want well, you to just told me report. about it, so I now I'm not interested well, anymore. It doesn't sound that cool. Listen, I went to college with a lot of my friends would hitchhike across the country, dude. I just never really had it in me well, to, no, to do that. Dude, this is, this is, you're in the 90s, man. Like, that's, that was, was an a, afterthought. Like, you, people are getting fucking tortured when you, when you hitch. There's too many weirdos. Then. Too many weirdos now. And, um... Yeah, they, yeah, you don't want to be hitchhiking. Dude, that's like, no, no one's hitchhiking anymore. But hit, people hitchhike in, like, Hawaii, maybe Alaska or something like that, where it's a little more common. You know, people trying to get from point A to point well, B. I think camp. if you're in Europe, just like Robin Leonard, we had him on. I think he was, like, hitchhiking. You hear shit. about his snake farm, dude? Yeah. Is the Missouri? FBI 30 is, like, million all bucks? into this? Like, what's going on with that? Well, he probably had an illegal snake farm. Like, you can't, there's restrictions and stuff. I don't know. Is that what, what's the story with it? It's like out there. Yeah, it's being what a bad, like. What a, did he do something illegal? Is he hurt still. What's his deal? I don't know. The well, hell will we ever see Robin guy? Leonard back in the NHL? Wow, he's making money too. Well, he's pissed off. He's not making more. Remember? Yeah, he was mad about. It. He's a, he's like a he's like some of those some athletes, and it's very bizarre. Mm-hmm. They always just have a puss face on them. Puss face? Yeah. Like, like what does Jack that define that for? Like, yeah, I'm a victim. I mean, I, mean, I had a tough and uh, I no, you're you're in a show. You're okay. Yeah, you might have had a little bit. No, you're okay now. Your first Don't round be fucking pick. mad. Your first round you're pick. a first round pick. You got money off the wazoo. You're okay. You're okay. Like I'm always mad, mad the media, this, that, and the other. No, you're a superstar. You have dime piece wives. You have girlfriends out the wazoo. No, you're doing okay. That's snakes. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about anybody. Oh. Like any of these guys are just like, they're just puss face all the time. Like, uh, angry face. I'm out to get the world. The world's out to get me. Nah. Like, you're okay. Calm down a you little bit. You know anybody bit. like that? Yes, I do. I don't want to hang out with yes, anybody do. who's got down, that face. Down and out. Down Downer. Guy. I like to get up. Me too. Don't bring me down. I need positive people around me, Cam. Jesus. I know. I don't like Debbie Downers. Like, oh my Neh. god! I know I'm, I bitch on here, but it's some people, some people like when I bitch on on podcasts and radio. Mm-hmm. But in real life, we're hanging out, we're having fun. Hey, all y'all, let me tell you something right now, especially all my people. Uh, you want to hear a good ass interview? If you're new to the podcast, go listen to our conversation with Robin Leonard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god! You know, I mean, that blew up. It did. That what one he, blew up. He was like, yeah. I, yeah. I like the people who come up, come on here, and just 
Yeah, I do. Say whatever. Damn right. Well, that like let say it out. the things they're not supposed to say. Let it out. You let know? it out. I did a podcast with uh, give Riley Cote a shout out. How was it? And uh, now nah, I just look like shit on video. I move my hands. So around listen, so I called like, Cam afterwards, and because uh, you know they're putting out a million videos, oh I feel God. like it's the same clip every time. Though, <laughs> is know. it still about the time you fought Riley Cote? I feel no, like they no, did all kinds because the first his first fight or your first the fight Danny Briere clip. I'm like, oh, what I say about Danny? What do you say about Danny? Just he's going to do a good did job. Did you embarrass Wait, the brand? I don't think so. Did you do anything that would know. embarrass the I, brand? No, I, sometimes I get worried about re-listening to myself, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh God, just let it be. Did you pump the tires of the podcast? Of course, I had my canvas at first form stuff on. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I just look like shit on. Mm-hmm. I truly did you did. handle yourself better in that interview than, than you did the, in yeah. the job in the? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was afterwards. Oh my god, what a day! What a long day! It's a long day. Man. Yeah, like, okay. it's a long day. What me. was afterwards? The interview, I think. When we was it after our meeting? No, it was before. Okay, so I'm like, Ooh. oh no! So I by know. the time the meeting came around, yeah. you're just done. So okay, yeah. well I'm gonna it's cut you some slack. No, on I, that. no, Andy, when you I listen to you, like I bullshit on here. Yeah, but if you're like, yeah, I, I, I listen. Well, to you. sometimes I gotta be the. Sometimes you gotta listen to me too, so you know. Oh, good. Sometimes you just listen to me once in a while. That's all. No. Oh. Like today. Yeah. No, let's not do the intro when we get Jared Bull on. No, we're doing the intro. Now we're here. We're rocking and rolling. We're doing our thing. Hey, all the I'm not com- waiting around. Columbus fans, we've got some good ones coming up because we've got the Wiz coming up, too. Oh, yeah. Next Is he coming? Okay, next yeah. week. Okay. Horty, so. trying to get Horty on. Darcy Hordichuk. All these guys, man. Jared Would you Bull. ever want to play in Columbus? I mean, be honest with you. Yeah. Me. Columbus, Ohio? Hell yeah. You know what I hear about Columbus? Is uh, nice, city, and this dude. is probably more interesting to me than you. So, um, because I don't know why I'm telling you, but they have great golf courses. <laughs> Everywhere has great golf courses, bro. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't start the brother thing. Brother? Uh, that that's when when Cam Hulk starts Hogan? ending every sentence in brother. That means that is that a shtick or is that know, a you turn into a different person? It's like the brother Cam. Is that um? What's that word of? What do I? What's that word that you? Yeah. Do? Oh, uh, it's a, a uh, uh, crutch. Crutch. It's a crutch. I say brother now. That's your crutch. I have 50,000 crutches. Well, that's a new and one. And they all recycle that's each other. That's a new one, brother. Well, like sometimes, sometimes Keith Kachuk will end every sentence. Yes, in brother. he does, doesn't he? <laughs> Poor big Walt goes on Carlos' show. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Walt, Walt's the coolest dude in the world. And he just wants to be real. Mm-hmm. And then once shit blows up, and he's like, probably like, God damn it. <laughs> See, the problem you know? is with Keith Kachuk is that he can never not be Keith Kachuk, right? When in reality, he's talking about his kid's hockey team. So he's like, my kid's team's soft. Yeah, and Matthew's not, though. So it's easy for him to say that because Matthew's having an awesome because year, Because Matthew's too. having a great year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know he's, like, talking about... Everybody but him. What if you're Matthew? Are you like, oh, man. Stop. No. Really? Yeah. I'd say, yeah. He doesn't need that attention. Everybody knows it. But, dude, the coach can say something. And I like Paul Maurice. Yeah, I the think The GM can do. say something. Bill Zito's fine. Uh, players can say something. Media. Who, who's the Who's the big media guy in Miami? Do you have? <laughs> I don't know. And it doesn't even. You don't even hear about no, it. No, but big dog. The big Walt I in know. Toronto, staying at Brady's house, <laughs> just says, "Ah, <laughs> there's something." Where he's like, Big Walt will also kind of get like he knows Carlo. You know, like, yeah, we played together. Although he also called Carlo tough. There, I had to send that clip to a uh, big Walt. He did, and I and was big like, Walt would chirp Carlo and big it, time. I'm, oh yeah, we're on for a getting t- hurt all the time. Text chain. And, and somebody said, Big, did Big Walt really just call Carlo I tough? I figured that. <laughs> we love Carlo so much. I, I love him so much. He's so funny. Oh, yeah. And he's, he's so doing talented. a great job. He's, doing, he's so damn talented. He knows so much about yeah. sports. And he's funny. He loves And he takes a beating. He he's not does doesn't he, get pissed if does you he chirp take him. sports intravenously? Does he like excuse me? <laughs> like does he does he shoot himself up with sports? Is he in me? Sports. I gotta have it all. But that but if you do, What's on? What's up? Oh god! WNBA! Yes, oh, that. Caitlin Clark lost. Caitlin Klein. I she feel lost. bad for her. And then they're talking uh, shit to her on the... On with the, their fake eyelashes, by the way, oh, which is kind of goofy. That girl looking like fly like, what's on that? the court. I'm going to do my thing, girl. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. So she gives uh, uh, her the hand in the yeah. front of the face. Caitlin Clark had done that against South Carolina. Yeah, but she just did it like randomly. South Carolina's uh, coached by Don Staley, one of the best uh, uh, female basketball players in the history of the game. Yeah. And they are an unbelievable team, that South Carolina team. I don't think they had lost yeah. like all year. Caitlin Clark. I like her, man. You yeah. brought her up the other day, and I'm like, duh, duh, duh. but I, I watched her stuff. She's sick. She's, she's like, cool. she's like the female version she of Steph it. Curry. Yeah, but she's not. But yeah, the I, female version. Read her. Yeah, she is. Read no, her, no, I know. Read her Wikipedia page. 
Oh, oh son no. of a bitch. Oh, gosh. What is happening? Oh, the monsters are coming oh. out today, baby. Caitlin Clark's oh, raining three. God, oh, my. Make it rain. No, this is, a, um, this is just a uh, test because it's Monday, the first Monday of the month. Oh, we've been through but this But we'll before. be hearing some of these coming up. That's a horrific sound. God dang. Oh, you don't like that sound? Well, I love, because I love weather, and mm-hmm. I'm curious of tornadoes. Everybody's like, you love tornadoes? Well, I kind of do. It's interesting. Where do you go in your house when there's a tornado? Oh, I got your like house is out made, on the deck? You my can't house be out is made there. of stone, dude. <laughs> my house is made of stone. Dude, you better get boy. in the basement. Oh, dude, I got concrete wall. Dude, it would have to be catastrophic to get us. Like, get down, Kate. Get down. Go, go. Where's Boo. Where's Boo? Let me get Boo Boo. Grab the cat. Get the dogs downstairs. Lock the door. Get down. And then that monster's coming like. And then it's over. And you're hopefully you're alive. How you long walk does it out. last for? 30 seconds. No. That's the longest 30 seconds ever, dude. Ever. So the hardest hitting tornado states are where? Oklahoma, Arkansas, Iowa? Yeah, now it's kind of the Dixie uh, uh, the Dixie Alley down, down south, down yonder. Oh, I just went down in Alabama, in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Now Arkansas is getting it. Tennessee's getting it. Kentucky's starting to get it now. Tennessee is, has a lot of rolling hills that'll disrupt a lot of things, but there's what always a patch. Well, tornadoes like to form a flat area. It's like mm-hmm. you get it most power that way. Really? If it's very hilly, it'll get disrupted. I the see. wind flow will get disrupted. So that's why there's you don't a lot see of tornadoes in like mountainous regions. No, no, of course not. And you have to have, and you see, when tornadoes happen, you'll see the weather go from 87 mm-hmm. to 40, or 40 to 87, and like, and that's when it all comes together. Like, you know what grrr. we're going to see this year, this summer? What? You talk about catastrophic, like, um, Mother Nature. <sighs> what? Is, what? You're going to see some landslides in California, dude. Yeah, yeah, because of the rain? Yeah, okay. And the snow. S- yeah, in the snow, no doubt. They got a ton of snow. You're going to see oh. some serious landslides. No, you'll see, you'll see some eight northern, million northern dollar California eight, eight million dollar houses on a cliffside. Eight, ten million, twenty, 20 million, a hundred million, whatever. Plus. Okay, eight to a hundred million. You'll see monster mansions looking over a cliffside, and all of a sudden that cliff is going to start crumbling down, crumbling down, oh. and you're just at your house like, oh, we got to get it, we have to evacuate. This house is gonzo. That's going to happen. You'll see some houses uh, destroyed because what you said, landslide from all that rain that they're not used to having. It. Now, Northern California is used to have more rain, but rain was all over California, even in the parts down south, too. That's when you get fucked. It's like uh, if you're in Arizona, you watch these floods come in because you could see thunder 30 miles d- uh, uh, away. In Arizona. Andy, you know this. Dude, I've been and a part you, of a flood when I was a kid. Yes, I went out there. You see it, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, cool. There's, oh, it's going to miss us. No, that fucking, that rain's going to hit you eventually, and you're in a low point in Arizona. That flood's going to get to you. That water's got to go somewhere. Okay, so what are the natural disasters in, like, the mountain region? Oh, uh, avalanches? Yeah, I know. But. Oh, snow? It's horrific. Damn right. Avalanches out the wazoo. Snow where you're stuck on the I side of the road for three days? Yes. Happens all the time. Frozen pipes. Yeah. F- f- freezing weather, fro- frozen everything. Hardcore shit. So what's your favorite type of climate? Like, what would you not want to live question. in? Good um, question. I love the change of seasons. So you want four this seasons? This is my favorite. I love. And this is always my favorite when I play, too, because you know the season's coming to an end. Oh, you get excited about that? Well, if it's a grind all year long, you fucking a right. <laughs> you're damn right. You know, what about the playoffs? Dude? Well, it depends on if you're getting in the playoffs or not. But, like, you just know, like, you're out of the, the dark ages, which is January and February, the long, drawn-out, long dog days, man. You're done with that. Now you're in a tornado season. April, like, the, the flowers are blooming, man. And now you got that curious weather that you know, know what's going to happen. The weather gets nicer. I love that. And I also love... Those 55, 60 degrees, dry as hell, windy, scary Halloween October days. Well, when that, you could those start are a the, fire. By far the best My days. favorite fall October, is so beautiful. November's Love becoming it. my favorite month. Beautiful. Because October can still be a little warm. I like, you're right. I like this right here because the snakes aren't out yet for the most part. They're coming. My allergies They're are coming. They're coming. No, you're going to get right rocked now. here. But the snakes and spiders aren't 
as they're not they're not out as much right Correct. now. Or the, so you or can go the, hiking. Or the mosquitoes. Not yet. And so you can go hiking. If you want to go on that weird creepy trail, you Very can go true. there and you're not gonna get ticks out the wazoo and the weather's nice. Very true. And then the same way is when you have your first freeze, but then it gets warmer. So it kills a bunch of shit, and then you can go hiking and be outside. And you're okay, not gonna get I, I didn't need a dissertation here. I, 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 you I, asked I, me. I, I wanted to ask you. You what asked you, me. What your favorite answer. favorite time of year is for me. It's you're not like Christmas. For me, it's oh wow. Well, do. Don't get me. I, I love the Christmas. I love the. I love the fall you too. Celebrate Christmas, right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Do I celebrate Christmas? You don't celebrate both, um, because the kids would love the, that. I know they do. The, the extended family. I was going to say. So there is a celebration of life. and, and What do they like everything. better? Oh, Christmas. Do they? Dude, come yeah. on now. Yeah, I know. What kid doesn't like Christmas? Yeah, but like Hanukkah, you get presents every night or something, Yeah, right? we don't really do that. You know, um, her, my wife's... So it's kind of ridiculous. My wife's parents will give them like a, a gift. That's cool. For uh, for Hanukkah. <laughs> Are you going to chirp that or something? No. Okay, I'm Why would gonna, I do that? I'm just joking with you. I'm just joking. Why would I do that? I didn't know. Actually, Jews get uh, more hate than anybody yes. in the world, so everybody knows. People forget about the uh, what the Jews had to went through went through know. back in the day. It wasn't yeah. that long ago. NBA, play- I think people N- just forget yeah, about it once do. in a while. Do you know that Stormy Daniels' attorney, Mike Avenetti? <laughs> yeah, they pumped him up like he's gonna be the next president. Okay, <laughs> do you know that he owes me money? Are you serious? Oh yeah. From what? I worked for. You him. bang Stormy too? I haven't met her yet. She ain't that hot. She's not that. She wasn't hot at all, even when she was a no in the porn. No. But Trump will bang anything. So Mike Avenetti, they call him on television Mike Avenatti. I I never called they him blew, Avenatti. They blew him for so Dude, long. Dude, he was my boss. <laughs> for what? My brothers and I worked for him for several summers. For and what? We, he ran the uh, baseball fields at our local baseball Here association. Here in St. Louis? Yeah. <laughs> at our local baseball association. Yeah. Uh, and my brothers and I, like, were in charge of, like, my oldest brother was in charge of, like, grounds crew. And like so, every morning, dude, we'd get we'd go there early in the morning, cut grass, chalk the fields, rake the infield. Um, but I was much younger, so I kind of ran the like concession stand mostly. But we'd have like home run derbies at the end of the nights, you know, like um, like a lot of underage drinking and stuff like that during the home run home run derbies, you know, like because they had the draft beer and stuff like that. So nobody was twenty one who worked there. I don't even know if he was twenty one yet. He might have been. He may have been. But he was always a little bit different. But he used to always try so to. No, way older. But he would always try to, like, uh, short me on my checks. Because he'd tell me to log my hours, dude. So I would log the hours. <laughs> and I'd be like, here's my hours. And then he'd pay me. And he owes me 400 bucks. I sent him some yeah. direct messages on He's Twitter. Jail, he? Yeah, he is. And actually, <laughs> one of our good friends growing up is actually still friends with him. Um, still oh, yeah. knows him pretty well. Always kept in touch with him. So, Mike, if you're listening to this, mm-hmm. let's go ahead and get that payday. Although he, I think he owes a lot of people money. I think he was like stealing get, money from no clients shit. and shit. That money. And then he tried to extort Nike. Is that why he's really in jail? Well, it could be. He tried to extort you mess Nike. With the big boys like that, they're gonna get you, dude. These television like news networks were bringing him on every single night, blowing them, blowing them. <laughs> And he's like holding press Mike, conferences. Michael Ebenet. And they kids like p- pumping his tires up. And they're like, okay. Like, this just shows, like, how don't, stupid don't believe any of these. Well, that's what they did with Kai, it. too. Do your own homework. They on did things. that with Kai, the, the, the hatchet course, wielding they hitchhiker. They a lot of people. And they want to turn this guy into an overnight, like, sensation. Yeah. And then what happens? So, Avenatti, dude. We call him Avenetti. Um, this dude owes me money, and I want to get paid, dude. So, Mike, let's go. Write me the damn check. Yeah. It's been way too long. Hey, why'd Gretzky say there needs to be a clock and a shootout? Because like Kuznetsov takes so what? five minutes to get down the ice, and so he thinks what? it's unfair to the goaltenders. Is he the first one to say that? Yeah, so, other, like when they so go other people slow, have man. brought that up. Um, I like when they go slow, like Patrick Kane did. Yeah, but stuff. you can go slow, but he's saying you got to get your shot off within like nine seconds or something. Like, it shouldn't take you that long to hoarse. get down the ice. Man, Biz interviewing Brad Marchand, so good, dude. Like, it's just good. Like, mm-hmm. he just, he's so good. Well, they've got it. that thing. They got a thing going. And Marchand's such a cool cat, dude. He could tell. Like, he's cool as shit. You think? Hell yeah. Honestly. Yes. If he didn't, I'd say no. I'm not bullshitting anybody on here. I don't give a fuck. I think he's cool as shit. Absolutely. And I'll give Trent Frederick a little shout out, too. Should have had that first goal against the Blues the other day. I told him today. I sent Who him a stole message. That away from I'm like, uh, DeBrus. That's, that's your goal, Jake. Dude. I like that Jakey DeBrus too. Hell yeah. I like his, I like, I like his daddy too. Yeah, fuck that. I like that whole team. 
I like that Boston. You think Bruins they're the coolest team. team in the league? They're taking over. Yeah, dude, they're cool as shit. They're like they send pictures. They're like drinking at breakfast and stuff. Were they? Monk, yeah, I don't know, something like that. I, just, I don't know if I saw the picture. I don't know if it was breakfast or not. They were eating breakfast, but I don't it doesn't know. matter. It like they're just cool. The and my Jimmy Montgomery's cool as shit, and he's chirping the guys. He's talking to Trent on the bench. And look, you could do that when you're winning. I get all that, but they're a powerhouse, man. They're loaded, and their goalie situation, Jesus Christ, they're unbelievable, good, dude. Man. He made a great save to, Both of to them. finish up the, sh- the shootout. They're unbelievable. God. Swayman's damn good, too, man. They're loaded, Andy. Loaded. I don't think the Boston Bruins are uh, set up to sustain this level of success, though. I think they're going to lose some players, man. Guys are going to retire, especially if they win. Oh, who cares? I'm Let just, that happen. Oh, yeah. You need I'm a just break. Saying, they're going like, to win, dude. Like, they're gonna, if I'm a Bruins lose. fan... I don't know so what, what this team is. Like. You better hope they win this year. No doubt. Because if they don't, and maybe if they don't, maybe Bergeron comes back. Yeah, maybe Krejci comes it's back. It's coming to whatever. an end, Andy. But if they don't win this year, the Boston Bruins are not going to be a powerhouse for much longer. It's coming it's just, to an it's end. just what happens. It's coming you know? to an end, and that's okay. How will you look at this core group of players if they don't win another Stanley Cup? Um, Unbelievable. Really? Yeah. If they only win one? Yeah. And the one that they win was back in 2011. That was, was with a young Bergeron I know and a young Marchand. So I they, know what it was. they were obviously big pieces, well, but, they, not, okay. but they weren't the centerpieces. Bergeron were, maybe was, you know, getting they've there. They've been but. competitive for decades. Over a decade. That. I know that. I'm just asking. I think they're unbelievable. Brad Marchand's un, he's I think, unbelievable. I think Bergeron's on. Did Bergey, did he fight somebody the other day? Or was that a clip that they played where he threw a left and, like, caught a guy? Maybe it was young. Anyway, their core group of guys. I thought maybe they'd slow down without Chara. Like, Chara, it's just we, even weird still watching them without him. I mm-hmm. like, but, I, dude, to be well, that successful. They got that, that Lindholm who's unbelievable. He is good. And well, I, they got him. They, I know they, Panger talked about it on the broadcast, too, but I think I may have said that on here. Like, he, the Blues wanted him badly. He just he he, hits too. He didn't want to sign here. So, okay. So, they weren't going to trade him unless they had an extension yeah. in place now somewhere. And so, you know, he wanted to go to Boston. Hey, he obviously fun, made the right decision. Boston's a fun place and to And you know what else, man? They made the right decision to move it on from, you know, Bruce Cassidy, too. No shit. Because that was an issue that you only heard about here on the Canvas yeah, podcast. I, I hate to say it like that, but that's just the reality of the situation. Nobody else wanted to talk about it. It was the elephant in the room. And uh, all of a sudden, he leaves, and now guys come back. Bergeron comes back. Krejci comes back. And you bring in a uh, – and, and DeBrus doesn't want to be traded. You know, I mean, some of these other guys all of a sudden like felt free and are having career seasons. Trent Frederick being one of them. He's having a career year. Is he going to make 800 next year? You think so. (laughs) Somebody chirp me on my radio show. Who knows? He may not. He he, he may have to leave. I know. You know what I'm saying? Like if all these guys retire and stuff like that, they're going to have some money to pay. But he won punch the other day. A kid, Lane Patterson or something yeah. like that, who had probably never fought in his life. Yeah, it must be nice. But he did one punch him. It must be nice to fight guys. We got just Jared. Don't know we got do. Jared Bowl coming on Such here, a man. Good dude. I, like I, I see him like he, Such a good dude. Did he had this uppercut? Bolsey? you damn right he so, did from downtown. Every one of these fights, I see this uppercut, and, oh. he, and he caught Reaver too. I can't wait to ask him. He caught me a couple times like, about damn, like man. you know just okay, like Reaver. It's so funny because Reaver is like, oh, he's the heavyweight champion of the world. Like the heavy, 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 heavy. And listen, there's no doubt Ryan Reeves would still have been a, a quality fighter even in your day, you know? And he was. But he, yeah, but he wasn't, he wasn't well, he considered wasn't as cocky, I'll tell you that right what now. he is now. And it's like, even Trent Frederick, man, who's a young up-and-coming, guys know he's tough. You know, he and Shenner were kind of discussing I potential like Shinner. Shinner of goal. fighting and whatever. But, you know, like, it's just uh, the game's different in terms yeah. of who they have to deal with. Yeah, Cote asked me about fighting. I go, uh, I don't give a fuck. I, I know they're banned. He asked you to it. break down the Philadelphia Flyers, too. He, do you hear what I said? I go, don't ask me to do <laughs> Dude, that. you got the wrong guy on here. I go, don't said. ask me to do that. Why would you want me to do that? I'm outside looking <laughs> and, in and here he and lives there. there. Like, you guys, all you know 10,000 times more than I do about the situation. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me that. Yeah, Braden Shen is a throwback. I love Shen. Uh, you know, this game got a little bit quiet right around uh, when some of these moves were happening. You he know, like, beating last game, he wasn't right? happy. Yeah. Probably that some of these guys were getting dealt. Like he was super, super tight with a lot it's of these captain. players who have left here in recent years, right? He's a with captain, uh, guys like Schwartz and you know Tyler Bozak retiring, and Ryan O'Reilly getting traded, Schwartz leaving. Like I said, you know, Bortuzzo's still here. You still cut, you know, some of that crew, but 
I mean, there's no doubt he's just a little bit different compared to a lot of the players you see nowadays. Yeah, man, I I, I like it. But anyway, just like the fighting thing, it, it is what it is. It's usually just like uh, after somebody lays somebody out, a kid will come up to him, try to throw him down, does nothing, does do, or just get his ass kicked, mm-hmm. and then he'll get a penalty, and then the dude that knocked the guy out will score in a power play. Yeah, so it's like a triple whammy. I just hit your guy, your guy just came and got his ass kicked by me, and then I score on the power play. <laughs> like what the fuck? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. And there's some good fights. Delorier and those guys will go here and there. Um, but if if it was completely out of the game, maybe it'd be goofy at the beginning. But I think people would get oh, over people it. adjust to everything. Of course, it's just now you like, take hitting out of the game. Mm-hmm. That's a different animal. It's in my just opinion. like the shootout. The shootout was goofy when it started. Now it becomes part of the game, even though some people don't yeah. like it. The trapezoid was goofy when you first saw it. Now you don't even think about well, it. If it was 2010. And we had three monsters on every team in the NHL. And then you c- cut off fighting. People would be like, what the fuck? We had three fights a game. Heavyweights. Everybody's yeah, waiting for the heavyweights. Can you imagine being a really good player and, like, you can't make the league because, like, now every team has three monsters who who aren't there to necessarily play. Yeah, I don't know. Play. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they were, like, how good are you? You must really not be that good because you're just going to be a penalty killer or something in between. Maybe you could center that line. Well, you're essentially well, how about play, you're essentially removing a fourth line well, from how about every team. Play, bring more value to what the coach and like a Lou Lamarolo thinks that the tough guy brings. So it doesn't like it's not guaranteed. The tough guy's always got to bring value. So if there's a guy that's not that tough, but he brings more value to the tough guy, he's gonna play. So just be better. Mm-hmm. Be better. You think all these hockey guys up there, like Lou Lamarolo, all these guys that make all these decisions, like, oh, who's in the lineup and they want a tough guy? There's a reason for it. So whoever that whoever's not the tough guy, and you think you're going, he's taking my spot. Be better. I truly believe. Be better. You'll, you'll make a team. If, if you if you put a roster together full of players who could bully their way through a game and intimidate the opposition, so and you got to have guys who can play and score. Got to play. That. I get no that. doubt. I get. But if you built a team full of toughness, grit, in addition to the necessary skill that it takes to have success in today's game. The grit, but like truly players who are willing to get in the face of the opposition and just that intimidation factor. Hit, hits, I, hits, I hits. think I think that team would roll the through playoffs? the current, the current NHL. I think that team would absolutely roll because even in the playoffs, man, the game kind of shifts back to how it used to be. I know, not quite, not in the regular but season, but it gets they closer. Right. And hey, only the strong survive in the postseason. No, so. I know. I, I think I remember wit. Uh, Ryan Whitley was talking about how the game's so different now. Like, yeah, I was I played in NHL at the time. This new NHL, I wouldn't make the team. And I'm like, maybe, maybe you wouldn't. But in the playoffs, I still feel like it's 2010, 8, 9. You're right. Like, I feel like they just keep letting it go. So maybe during the regular season, you're not keeping up. But in the playoffs, when you could hook and clutch mm-hmm. a little bit more, and everybody's hitting each other, like it's just completely yeah. different. And we'll see. I so mean, you could take a shit kicking team and you play the Leafs during the regular season, you probably lose eight to two. Right. But you go in the playoffs and everything mm-hmm. changes. Now mm-hmm. you got that shit kicking team that's not as fast, but they're going to slow you down and they're going to make it miserable. And that's you. why I love the playoffs, and that's why the 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 the, the president's trophy winner hardly ever wins the Stanley Cup. It'd be great to see the Boston win, though, man. Like they're a very likable team. I think Jim Montgomery is uh, one of the best stories in hockey, just based on everything that he's gone through. I think if uh, if a guy like Bergeron, or Bergeron, who's a uh, who's a legendary player, if he could go out with another Stanley Cup, um, would be a great story. And if guys like Marshan and some of these guys can find a way to to, to add another one to the I don't resume, think they're likable. I'll you disagree with that. you with that. Well, yeah, around the league, I think people hate Boston. I think they hate Boston as a whole because they win a lot. In a lot of different ways. You talking and like all sports? I think of all sports, and and especially the Bruins too. With Marchant, he's loud. He does his thing. I think people don't like him, but they're interesting and they're fun to watch. I like him. I like Brad Marchant. Mm-hmm. But I think as a whole, people you think they're that unlikable? Really? It's good. Marchant's the biggest dick in the league. Yeah. Okay. What are you talking about Slewfoot's guys who fucking well, yeah. He, he may not be the most liked. Well, he's tied to the team, Andy. It's like Jordan Bennington. I think the Blues are hated now because of him. And I don't mind that. Fucking hate him. Who cares? You give him attention. You know what sucks is when you're just boring. Mm-hmm. When you're not hated. No one talks about you. Be hated. Or be something. Be different. And Boston certainly is that. But it did. Yeah. I'm going to see if Kai will join us, actually. And see Fuck that idiot. 
And, and the stories aren't even that good. No, it's an amazing documentary. Stupid ass. You need to watch hippie it. Hippie boy. He was like a homeless guy. Cares about him. <clears throat> Cares about him. You need to like start watching other things. Yeah, Andy, tell me. Like start watching some things. You don't even have time for anything. You don't have time to do anything. I have time to do a lot of different things. Mm. I have time to be interested in different things in life. Lay off the bikers, dude. That's all I want to say. Fuck all of them. No, I'm serious. The cyclists. Just the lay cyclists, off of them. You don't even wave. You don't even. They don't, they don't rude, like you, dude. Man. They know when you're coming. Dude, they, they know who you all are. The, all the boys out there hate them. They're elitists. They think that they own everything. You know, it's, it's like, better for the environment yourself. to uh, ride a bike. Yeah, but it's, it's not feasible when you own a business and you got to get to work when you live out there it's not feasible Andy that's not realistic I know you don't understand that because you live in little Ritzyville at the Creve Corps fucking racket club but down yonder people got to drive man you're in St. Louis dude St. Louis is spread out we're not in a metropolitan area we're not in fucking fucking Jersey and New York no man like we got to drive places so people got to get places and there's some roads that are shady that you shouldn't be bi- cycling on, and they do. And they don't give a fuck. Let me say this. I think They're it's nuts. way easier to cycle and get from point A to point B out where you are versus here, dude. Are there's, you out of your dude, there's mind? there's traffic everywhere. What are you here. talking about? That's just so there's dumb. cars everywhere. It's such a dumb There you thing. get the country roads. Dude, you can't. Dude, everything's spread out. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You have to drive, man. What are you talking about? Well, I'm just told you what I'm talking about. No, you're not telling me anything. I don't, you're not making any sense. You said it's easier to cycle out there than it is here. No, it's not. People love the hilly, the hills, and the and you know. Be, I don't care what they like. And, man. and you're in the way. You're in the versus way versus being in the city streets. It's not Although city. I don't live in the city, but I'm just saying. Just no, you live general. close to the city. I don't live in the city. You haven't even been out my way, man. Like you don't even know. So they just piss me off. It's it's on. It's just it's just like I, I don't understand. The danger is extraordinary, you know. Mm. Yeah, I just haven't been focused today. I'm still pretty rocked by uh, by what Caitlin Car- Clark losing. <laughs> I like that girl, man. She was classy, even though she was getting chirped by the uh, the chick the girl with, with the, the eyelashes, foot eyelashes. There's this other model chick that plays soccer, and she's literally got soccer. Yeah, caked makeup on, like her makeup when she's playing games is caked on like you are doing TV, mm. like where it's professionally done. Yes. Like that's to me, it's ridiculous. Uh-huh. Well, you think, you think they have like a makeup uh, artist inside yes. this, uh, no. the it locker was, room before the game? It was caked on like somebody did it professionally. Probably helps her game. Yeah, oh, I bet it does. When it, when you sweat and that thing runs everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It helps it looks game. like Tammy Faye Baker. Looks, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Remember her? Yes. Do you know yes. who she is? Yes. The religious, and what happened, her makeup would they like, started like you know, she's crying because they start cheating on each other or something. They, I don't know. It was, a, it was a very you, uh, conflicting like, situation. I'm going to give you my money. Like those people just probably They're stole. Like stealing money. They stole money from people in middle of Missouri. that are just like, oh, he go and they mm-hmm. give them money. Could you be an evangelist? Oh my! Well, you want to make money? Either start start a cult, start your own religion, or do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Are those the options? Well, if you look at it. They make money. There's no other options. No, there's there's, there's options. Um, let me just ask Start you a couple, religion, couple like hockey Scientology. questions, and then we're going to get to Jared Bowl, yeah. who was phenomenal, awesome. by Great the way. Dude. Jared Rittenhouse. Jared Rittenhouse Bowl. Rittenhouse. Kyle. He's got two hardcore dude, names. The Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse. His last name was Rittenhouse. I've never heard of an individual who has a name. Yeah. Rittenhouse. I know. That, that says last name all over it, doesn't That's it? That's so funny, man. It does. Jared Isn't he kind of fucked up too? That Rittenhouse? God, yeah. Like he's doing some like. Yeah, he's goofy. Yeah, don't, don't like him. Don't tell me who to like. I'm, not, I'm just gonna like, tell I you. Know don't like him. I, I, I'm not gonna take orders from you. Hey, like, I'm you happy for Jacob know. Verona too. I don't want to like. Uh, I know he plays here at St. Louis, but you know we he, said it at the time. I don't know if it was necessary to have all this stuff public. He, I, I'm all about guys getting additional right. chances. Or they have absolutely take a no. second chance, man. You get second chances, absolutely. But it's up to them to the reward yeah. the team who, who who gives them that opportunity. No doubt. And so it's kind of a partnership, Cam. And we're seeing that right now. Who's your uh, Norris Trophy winner, Cam? Do you have one? Morrissey. Oh, really? Maybe. Let me look at the numbers. Over Carlson. Maybe Carlson. Well, he's in the mix. Morrissey was. Then he got hurt. I think he's still in the mix I don't for know. sure. But. I, well, who's so up there? Who's the Winnipeg's top like my least favorite team. So it's like it's funny right how Andy will ask me that question, but it's really you're, you're going to pick the guy that has the most points, which is Carlson. Okay, so Carlson. Yeah, but I'm not saying I, I'm, I've never subscribed to that theory that it should just go to the guy with the most points anyway. 
Well, if he's leading points by like But he's 20, got like almost 100 points, too. Like, you got to give it to him. Yeah. You know? And he's won a couple of times before. It's not a flash in the pan. Yeah. Uh, I like seeing him dominate I once just want to see him in the playoffs. You want to well, see it's him? not going to happen. I know, but you would like to see that. You know what I mean? I want Pittsburgh to try to make Chicago's it. Chicago's taking over, right? Chicago's going to get gosh dang Connor Didn't Bernard. I say several weeks ago, Brody, did I not say Chicago is the worst team in the league? They're going to get Connor Even Bernard. when they were, like, winning games. They're going to get the stud, man. Chicago is going to go from. They're going to go from Kane and Taves to Bedard. To Bedard and probably another pick. He kind of looks like a Blackhawk. He just looks. He, he could fit in there, but I'm not fit in, in favor of the Blackhawks getting they need sit, anything good they right need now. They need to get set back a couple years. Yeah, they right, need Andy? to come clean on some things too. Yeah, I know. Like what happened? Like what really happened? Well, why did you not? And how come the guy who's him? responsible has never spoken about it? McDonough. Yeah, you need to get. You had it too good for a long time, the and then you fucked up. So it's like you know what? And they blamed Screw everybody you. else, dude. It's like you were on top of the world. Mm-hmm. Now you were shit for a long time. You had mm-hmm. Ronick and that great. And then you were dog shit, just like the Blues were for mm-hmm. a bit. Early 2000s. Oh, they were so bad. They were terrible. The owner had, they had no money. They weren't even on TV. And then they get a couple monsters, mm-hmm. and they turn it around, and then they're dominant. Like, dominant. Like, the greatest show on turf. Like, you're dominant, man. You mm-hmm. had superstars. You packed 22,000 people. All those wealthy guys getting off of work, putting their cane jersey over their their, their suit and tie. And they, they spent money, and mm-hmm. it was just everywhere you looked, there was Jerseys, Blackhawks. No, Blackhawks. it was a great in-game it was experience. Unbe- it's it was so awesome, incredible. loud. The so you had it. Now you're on top of the world. You're on top of the world, and then you fucked up in a weird, bizarre way. Not because you traded guys away. Not because you did you draft picks. No, because you in-house fucked up in a really bizarre way, and you didn't own up to it. There's still many questions, mm-hmm. and now you're going to be shit for a couple years, yeah. and you're going to get Connor Bedard. Yeah. I don't know if I like that. I, I, no, I agree with I you. I don't know if Just I like that. Just because Joel Quimville is being forced to sit on the <laughs> sidelines and not be able to coach, and Stan Bowman's being forced on the sidelines and he can't manage, doesn't mean that everything else is okay with the Chicago Blackhawks. They made some major, major mistakes. Weird mistakes. And you've got one or two guys – that are taking all the heat. And I'm not so sure they even deserve the heat. And I think the people who truly deserve the heat and should be out in front of this entire scandal and speaking about what they knew and what they know and why they didn't act on it, that's the biggest travesty in all this in addition to everything else that went on to the player and all that, you know? But it's the fact that there were those that were in charge that were responsible who didn't do anything, yeah. and you got other, everybody so else taking goofy. all the heat, those guys getting away with it. That, that's what they I don't like. They need to get set back a couple more years. So, man. no, they should Sorry. not get Connor Bedard. I agree, but they're bad, and they're going to have the greatest chance unless it's rigged. And it's going to go to it Arizona. Is. I don't know. Um, I don't apparently, know. the league is considering not having Pride Nights. Yeah, I saw that. All right, whatever. You want to have a Jew- I asked you a have very Jewish night? serious question. You want to have a Jew- Jewish night? Did you see the serious question that I asked on Twitter? No. And my ni- Twitter is so convoluted. Ninety-eight percent of the people, and you know, participated and understood what I was saying. Of course, you had a few people who oh, didn't. Of course, they, did they? But get I, you? I, but no, but I really wanted. If they thought they did, did but a lot say, of people Andy? came to my defense too. What did you say, homie? Well, I, I wanted to know what people think. Should they just? Should it be an all-in or nothing approach with the uh, pride jersey? Where the entire team wears it, or they don't do it. Because when the team chooses to wear it, but one player chooses not to wear it, the entire story comes, it is just about that one yeah. player who chooses not to wear it. That's all we hear about. Yeah. We don't hear about the cause. We don't hear about why they're doing it. We don't hear how about how it, how it benefits any, yeah. Yeah. any individual or so any group. It's all about the one dude. So all we hear about is about the one player who chose not to wear the jersey. So my feeling is, to all the teams out there, if one guy chooses not to wear it, I don't think the team should probably wear the jersey. I don't know. Because otherwise, the message and the reason that the league is choosing to get involved in this anyway, it completely gets lost in translation because all we hear about is the damn player who chose yeah. not to wear it. I know. It's just, whatever. Like, you're, so, you're, you're raising money. Just don't be a dick to people. You can believe what you want. You could be Jewish, you could be Christian, you could be Muslim, 
You can be whatever you want to be. Just be nice to people. You don't have to agree with everything that goes on in life. Just be nice to and people. And again, I'd wear the jersey. But like, are you gonna, I'd, wear, like, would you I'd wear, go out and take one would you, So would I. 100% I would. If you gave me anything, I'd wear it. Like, really. I don't, I don't really care. But, like, because it doesn't affect anything. When we wear a jersey, I'm, not, I'm thinking about the game. But if you're like, Cam, you need to wear this pride jersey. You need to wear this jersey all day today. Mm-hmm. No, no. Andy, you need to wear it on your broadcast. You need to wear a rainbow. I'd be like, oh, what? What? No. Cam, you need to wear a John 316 shirt everywhere you go. I'd be like, what? Mm. You need to wear, I, I'm Jewish and I'm proud. No. Or whatever. I'd be like, no. I mean, know what I am. Like Methodist? I don't know fucking know. Well, you need to wear I don't know so, what the fuck. You, you I'm a fucking weirdo. You need to start respecting weirdo. the cyclists. But I'm just going to be, fuck them. You want me to wear a, I'm going to bag up a cyclist <laughs> shirt? I'll do it. But like I, I don't like when people tell me what to do, man. I know. I'm Kramer. It's not the players' I'm like, I'll, responsibility I'll, I'll go, here. I'll go raise money for you. You want me to go speak at an event and do something, raise money? But then you tell me to do other things. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna go home and I'm chill with saying, my puppies. I'm just saying for those who are keeping score. <laughs> Get out of here. For those who are keeping score, like teams should not be like when planning these events should not be solely focused on. Well, what's the reaction going to be? What's this guy going to say? What's that guy going to say? I, 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 I don't even care. You know what I'm saying? I got my own problems. I just think that, like, uh, I got my own problems. Man. Let's focus on the positivity <laughs> and uh, on those who are choosing to. You know, uh, you got to wear a Ukraine flag. Wear you got to wear the fuck. Like, what? Like, what do I got to do? But again, I would because I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless it, like, it hinders me in something. Like, I got to wear a fucking pride jersey 90 degrees out when I got to go to radio. I'm like, what? Who's making me do this? So, anyway, it doesn't matter. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is close to 100 points. Hey, well, you know, in 2013-14, I believe, 14-15, Jamie Benn had 87 points. And won the heart. And won the heart. So, now you got 10 or 11 guys over 100 points. Pretty dang good for hockey. Scoring's up since. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been. uh, Well, let me give you a couple of trivia questions. Scoring's up since early 90s, I think 93. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's a good sign. But Matthew Kachuk, who we love, got back-to-back. 100, 100 point season seasons. as American. Who was the other He's guy? He's going to get 40. Who was the other guy? Oh, he got 40 goals. Who was the last guy to yeah. do that as an American? Uh, the last guy to get 100 points in back to back seasons. Who was it? So you're going to tell me it who? wasn't Kane? Nope. You're going to tell me it wasn't Madano? Nope. Um, it's in the 90s? Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on. Hold on. Come on. Brett Hall? Come on. Even though he's 95. Not. We're just talking about them. Brian Leach. We're just talking about them and how they shouldn't get Connor Bedard. Oh, Chicago? Mm-hmm. Roenick? Yep. He's the last one to do it? Yep. Jarrah was a hell of a player, man, of, back in the day. And he was hitting guys, too. He, he, grind, was. he was grinding it. He was grinding it. All those guys got hit back then. Even Madonna got rocked grinding. by fucking Marky Messier. Like, Jesus Christ, elbow, sit down, you're done. Dunzo. Jiminy Christmas. All those guys took a beating. These guys are tiptoeing around now, man. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, though, dude. This guy's going to get a – he should not get – it should not count as a 100 points because he's never been close to it. Well, he's and doing he plays What does that mean, Andy? He, That's a stupid he thing He plays with these guys it's that a stupid thing are to putting say. up 120, you did it. 150. You did it. You did it. I you put up 100 points. You, you got to bump them up. I want to know how many he of his took points advantage of the situation, were Andy. secondary get assists. Get out of here. On, on uh, Dry's Idol and McDavid Maybe, goals. But you're still there. You're good enough to be on that How many line. power play points does he have? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to praise him, dude. Good for you, man. I like R&H. Uh, I don't know why you're trying to get all emotional You're the one on doing me. it. I don't give a shit. I'm just saying, like, you're like, well, it's, gonna, it's fake. I'm like, no, he got 100 points. Well, it's, it's embellished. Because he's playing with good players? Playing with uh, incredible players. Yeah, all right. You put He's a number. Of, you put a, you put a number of guys on this league, man. <laughs> They're pretty good. They're gonna two. end Jesus. up. Oh my god! Hundred fucking fifty. Points. So who's your heart trophy winner? Well, what do you? Who do you think? <laughs> I mean, that's a stupid question. Who's He's, your, beating, who, he's beating Mario Lemieux. Who's your runner the up? The last one to do it is Mario Lemieux. Who's the 90s. runner up? Um, 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 um. That's a good question. Who is the runner up, dude? I'm missing them. Could be Matthew, man. It could be. It could be Matthew, Matthew Kachuk. Kachuk. He good. He's got to get them in the playoffs. I know. Oh, it's like what the fuck. You think the Rangers are going to go far? They got too many good players, man. 
I don't know. They got so like even like a guy like uh, Terrace Psycho. I know he scored. And I scored the other night. Yeah. He did, but he played twelve and a half minutes. Man, that's just a but tough. This means that you're deep. I know. I, know. Okay. I hope they're okay. I like them. I like that team. Fuck that. It's tough. I like to, Jacob Trouba. It's tough to get. In, hey, when I you're like all them. when you're used to I playing, like you're used to playing seventeen, nineteen, I like entire Kreider. career, and you go down to twelve, dude. It's tough to get into your rhythm, dude. I like when things happen at MSG for hockey because you get they'll bump past like uh, women's basketball on ESPN sometimes if you do things at uh, on, in MSG. I always wanted to make a statement at MSG, man. I scored a goal there. I had a brawl there. I had fights there. It's awesome. Anytime you do something there, Toronto, Montreal. Chicago sometimes like you're gonna get you're gonna be in the spotlight always put on a show when you're playing at MSG just put on a fucking show Mm -hmm. when you're in Toronto put on a show put on a show you know they will they will highlight you to the day is long you have to know that just know it be crazy be something do Mm -hmm. something can I ask you about Jordan Cairo 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 I hate when people call him that Cairo Cairo this guy is going to end up with somewhere around 38, 39, somewhere around 74, 75, 76 points, somewhere in that range. Yet he really hasn't had that good of a year. Like, it's like, he what's what's the ceiling for this guy? Yeah, he can get 100 points. You know, he told me in an interview earlier this year that's his goal. To get 100 points? He wants to get 100 points. It should be the win of Stanley Cup. Well, whatever. individual goal. We talked team he goals. He hasn't won yet. We talk team goals, okay. individual goals. Of course, he wants to win a Stanley Cup. Well, okay, we'll say that first. And then he we'll did. Go on. Okay. Well, I didn't say That's it first. Right. Well, him say it first, and then say hundred points. He we said go. it first. He said Stanley Cup. Oh, okay. So, although I think I asked, what kind of goals do you set out for yourself coming into the year? Well, obviously, you want to win the Stanley Cup, but you know, hundred points, he said, would be cool. Fuck yeah! Every every offensive player in the league says that. Well, the league. You don't think Matthew Kachuk wants to get 100 points? You don't think Clayton Keller wants to get to 100 one year? Clayton Keller, we're going to give him a shout out because he's having a good year too, man. Hell yeah. Little bugger. He looks like Patty Kane, dude. He just does. I know Biz and those guys were talking about him the other day. Biz pumps his tires up. As you he think should. he should uh, he does look demand like a trade? Man, he's. I don't know. He loves it out there. He kind of probably loves it, but he needs to win. He you loves know? it. I'd out say there. give it, see where you go for a couple of years, and then, and then figure it out because you know know what's going to happen. Now, if you don't get see R and H putting up a hundred points, dude, playing with uh, with those cats, and you got Clayton Keller putting up his points. Yeah, but he's doing his thing. Playing he's with nobody, dude. Fine. Yeah, but he's making his money. He's doing his thing. So what's more yeah. impressive, R and H? Well, Nuge putting up a hundred, well, or Clayton Keller doing what he's well, doing. Well, they're scraping every night. What's more impressive? Well, let me explain. Always are scraping to be in every night. Sometimes when you're loosey goosey, like Arizona, which you just you're just playing to play kind of thing. Sometimes it's easier, man. You know what I mean? Well, that's teams exactly don't take you right. Seriously. That's why teams who are way out of the playoffs teams are winning this time of year. They don't take you seriously when they go in. You're playing in front of fucking three thousand people, children. They don't even know what's going on. You're like, where am I? Am I in Traverse City? And Clayton blows your fucking ass up. Because <laughs> yeah. you're like, where am I at? I know. The fuck do I care? No, you're, there's something to be said for no that. shit. Like teams that win when they have nothing to play for. Yeah, there's like, you're going to Arizona, you're like, what the fuck? Like, I just played an alumni game that had more people. And then Clayton's like, well, you're right, like come where, on well, in here. You're like, where was this back in December? What is going on here? And then also, Where was this in November? Clayton's like, I'm just going to dominate. Yeah, and he has. You know. So you didn't answer the question. What was the question? What's more impressive, the Nuge or uh, uh, Clayton? Clayton. Yeah, he's got eighty-two points. Yeah, he'll get to ninety. You think? No, <laughs> maybe. I mean, he might. He get a four point nine. Yeah, you, you got to get more. one. He's got the puck the whole game. I just dude. think that he, uh, he truly does. He's listen, flying, I remember uh, little bugger when Brett Hall was scoring 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah. <laughs> and people were being critical about like his lack of defense, and he wasn't back checking. Well, he wasn't. No, but and he wasn't. But then and they didn't make it past. But then he wow. evolved as a player, and you know you see this with some other players. Eventually, you know what? Like why David Perron, he never put up that level of production. But like, as much as people worship Perron today, you know, they didn't do that with David Perron earlier in his career. I mean, he had to mature as a player, evolve into the player that he's become, and that's why he's become such a, a very good player and has had, you know, a, a very strong career. You know, a guy like Jordan Cairo at at twenty four 
is not the same player he's going to be, Cam, when he's 28, 29, 27. And um, you just hope that maturity in terms of the overall game evolves. But, you know, I know he's making a lot of money coming into next season, and he's got the contract extension, Cam, and he's at like 8.1 or whatever coming into next year. Do you know if he didn't sign that extension? And the Blues had, and he had to take, he took the Blues to arbitration. What kind of contract he'd be looking at? What? Well, I mean, the nearest comp. He's got more points than Robert Thomas, who signed for 8.1. That's the closest comp right there yeah. on the same team. Oh, he's 23 years old. So they'd be looking at having to pay him potentially even more than what they're already paying Robert Thomas. So listen, the cap's going to go up. Uh, this will this will eventually, I think, to a lot of people, look like a very good contract with the cap going up and what guys are going to be getting paid. Are you talking about Cairo? Yeah, if he continues. I thought you were talking about David Perron. No, 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 no. no, if he continues to put up the type of production he's shown the last couple of years and building off of that every year, the salary, to me, it'll be no big deal. Yeah, man. I'm not worried about it. I'm not so, worried about it. Um, let's get to uh, Rittenhouse, shall we? Yeah. He just texted me, too. He's like, thanks, dudes. Yeah. He's such a good dude. Great man. guy. And you can tell that right off the bat. And I'm not surprised. He does text me like he'll call me at like 2 o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. on Saturday night. <laughs> oh, he'll call. Him and his buddies. At a like bonfire They want to hear your, like, tell I'm us like, a quick been, story, I've been Cam. sleeping for five hours. Oh Cam, <laughs> five hours. Well, the, on a Saturday like night. two in the morning? On a Saturday night, depends on what Kate and I are doing. Oh, that's know. nine. Yeah, it's like probably 9.30. Were. I know. Actually, we stay up a little late. Have you been? Yeah, a couple nights. We were partying. I have bit. a rule where I won't call Cam after eight. I try not to at least. On a weeknight? Fuck no. Plus, honey, Cam does it. something that really I can't stand when people do it to me. What? I don't like it when you have me on speakerphone, like my with your other, wife in my, the room. My phone doesn't work otherwise. Oh, really? No. Your phone won't work? No. Unless people, it's on speaker? Yeah. You think I want to do that on purpose? Could I gotta you, go get it fixed, but I hate Could you imagine the- if someone did that to you all the time, where every time you're talking to them and uh, Andy. all of a sudden other people are in the room and you had no idea? Other people, it's my uh, one is for my wife. We're talking business. Like, she needs to know anyway. I'm gonna repeat what the fuck you're saying to her one way or the other. Well, you won't remember. And so you two, can't you do it to me every time I you call me and you're in your car and I'm like fucking. You're like stop cussing. My children are here. And I'm like oh geez, sorry. Cam, get uh, it off speakerphone, dick. Ty tells you. Well, I don't make me. He like saw you on a, on a picture the other day. Uh, there's a poster up at Afton Ice Rink or something. It wasn't like about you. It was like there's like no. a bunch of guys listed. But your yeah, face was on there. He's like, is this Cam? Probably what about me. Was it about the other guys that made it or something? <laughs> Out of your was mind. it about the other guys? The other guys? I'm the one guy left. I love off. that rink, though, man. I love going on. Yeah. It smells like my childhood. Yeah. I know. You know I know saying? the smell of it, man. You know, I was thinking about it the other day. My son skated there. I'm like, this may be the first time in my life I ever sat in the bleachers there. Yeah, I haven't. I've never sat in the bleachers. And they got old school wooden bleachers. Yeah, it's not the most comfortable building. I was old at, school. No, it's like cold shit, as hell. Like old, good ice and stuff Terrible like locker that. rooms. Terrible. It's yeah. really cold. They probably have hepatitis But they got the, the old school ca- concession stand, dude. Yeah, it's nice. Old school I, I don't want to chirp any rink in St. Louis. It's a community rink, and I love those. I love I love all the people that work we there, We get man. excited about the new age rinks that are like these like $100 million facilities, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're do. incredible. Yeah, but I like but the old school ones, Sometimes it's nice too. to go into an old school and community rink. I like talking to the people that work there. Yes. Because they're all big. I always... Go out of my way. They don't. I don't give a damn. They don't even know who you are. No, they know you, though, Andy. They don't know me. <laughs> have I done? <laughs> what have I done? Done anything. So this. So I was thinking, cause I, every time I've been there, I've either um, uh, been playing or coaching. Yeah. So I've never sat in the stands. Oh, they probably remember you playing. All right, let's get to Rittenhouse. We got to get there. Let's yeah. go ahead and do it now. As always, brought to you, Cam, by Hair Club and HairClub.com, 800-279-7878. Yeah. Uh, that is the number to call to get your first consultation. Mention us. You're going to save hundreds and hundreds of dollars off of your first consultation. Easy peasy, baby. It is so easy. Ask about that pill. Ask about that pill. You take a pill, your hair grows. I mean, it's pretty goddamn simple. It, it's like a it's like a hair growing pill. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yep. You your, just beard, like your beard, too. Really? Yeah, which you kind of need. I probably uh, could use that. Can you? No, serious question. Could you, you ask you for that? You no beard, eh? I'm not. I just shaved. No, but you don't, though. Grow it out a little bit. All right. It's really? It gets yeah. a little itchy. Oh, yeah, I bet you just yeah. thick as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're a cowboy. <laughs> um, 
Serious what? question. Can you ask for the pill just for yeah, the beard absolutely. and not the hair on the I don't top know of your how that head? works. I, I don't no, know. Like, I don't know can how they that works. Ma- like you just talk to them. Mix in there. Listen, call them up and talk to them. Walk in there and just talk to them. Get a consultation. They'll be like, here, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Here's what we could do. It's easy as shit. Yeah. Walk through the door. Everybody in there understands the game. That's the hardest thing, right? It's the hardest thing is walking, walking through the fucking in the door. door. It's so easy. Would you meet them in the parking lot and No, walk they're the in? nicest people in the world. I walk in like, what's up? I'm like, ba bam, where's the coffee? <laughs> I'll take that. There's candy laying everywhere. I'll mm-hmm. steal all their candy. You shouldn't do that. I'll walk around and like high five people. I'm like, what's up? Show me. Look at my hair. Like, help me here. Cam's, Cam's hands like, in the candy jar. I don't give the, a the shit. Candy jar. I'm like, no, no, seriously. I'm like, I, what's up? I'm, I'm literally high fiving people and they tell you what to do. They're like, here, Cam, we'll do this for him. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, it's it's the easiest damn thing in the world. They'll give you options and you, there's payment plans too, man. Mm-hmm. It makes it easy for you. Yeah, I know. They do. Being bald that. sucks. It just does. It's a. I talked to a deflating, number of people like you can't believe. that um, it truly is that don't have the same psychological uh, issue that you might have with it. I mean, some of them. What? Seem, they're fine. I mean, they they're yeah. they're okay with it. Most people aren't. Idiots. Really? No, no. When you go bald, it's a big deal. Mm. Especially if Look it's at, at a young age. You ain't, your hair ain't that thick, homie. Act like you're like no, oh, these poor little peasants. No, like you got your own problems, brother. Like you can't just you can't chirp to people that are going bald. Your hair ain't that fucking thick. Really? No, it's not. It's not bad. You're okay. It ain't that thick. How's it looking? It's fine. It's fine, but it's not like you're, you know, Dolph Lundgren or something flowing. I don't know. Get on with yourself. What's he from? uh, He's a very smart guy. I don't even think his hair is that good anymore. I see his daughter on Instagram. She's probably unbelievable looking and smart. He is a brilliant man. Mm -hmm. Brilliant man. Scientist. Like, went to school with all. Brilliant man. Dolph Lundgren. Ivy had a field hockey yesterday. I'll never understand that game. It was the first time I ever went to a, her field hockey game. Well, let her do her thing, man. The moms are just hot. Oh, my God. You want to come hot. to a game? Are they hot? Everywhere. Hot moms everywhere. Uh, everywhere. I can't go, then. I can't go. Do you want to come to a field I hockey game? I can't go. Game? Will you come? I'm not allowed to be no, around hot women. I, all right, then I can. And then that's even better. You when have you bring no your wife, idea. and then the, then the women like want to come talk to you more. So we go to this place. It's at like the most expensive all girls school in St. Louis. That's where they had a lot of the field hockey events on the weekend. And uh, the pavilion is called the Kachuk Family Pavilion. The Cougar Family. No, the Kachuk. They like sponsored the pavilion. Oh, that's cool. See, that's one thing, man. They 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 support everything. Yeah. Hot Constantly, mom, hot moms are the moms are, are you just, just like you put your glasses on. Like I can't even. Oh yeah, I, I, I wore my. Uh, See, I can't do that. Prescription dude. sunglasses. I'll I'll just put my head down the whole time. I had to go buy new glasses the other day too because I left mine in Nashville. Glasses are so expensive. Don't be blind. <laughs> well, see, I know how to do. It. I mean, I know it's under people. You got your some own people problem. Lose hair. Some you people lose problem. their sight. Yeah, but you, you, you like optically, no one knows you're blind until yeah, that's you're true. blind until you put your glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Andy was supposed to have, you know, our caricature for a camera trick. Mm-hmm. Andy had glasses on. That's not true. Yeah, he did. At for the beginning, you took them off. Really? Yes. So you thought they looked nerdy. Well, sometimes you look at, like, different options, and you choose which one you like the most. There's nothing well, wrong with that. Well, that's you. Well, you also wanted to be a lot more jacked, and I had to put a stop to that. Andy wanted to be his, his neck was going to be as big as my neck. <laughs> so Andy looked like a bodybuilder. I go, you can't. That's not true. Yes, it is true. And I'm like, I, you, you go, and he's like, I gotta, I gotta be bigger. And they made you jacked, and then we're both jacked. And it's like, no, no, oh. be real. Okay. Andy's all good, baby. I got, I'm a hideous mutant. But you're not big, so you can't be big with your caricature. That's all. No big deal. Okay. It's all good. You, you still like our caricature? God, yes. It's the best in the business, dude. Look at that. That's the best in the business, I think. It's so hard to replicate. There's, like, some good there's a lot of there's things. some good ones out there. Oh, spin chicklets is awesome. All Mr. Curfew yeah. is awesome. They're all good. Nasty Knuckles is awesome too. But I like our facial expressions look funny as shit. It's goofy looking. Those are serious, like badass. Ours is like, yeah. <laughs> 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 look at it. God awful. It's funny. Oh, first form, man. You want to see how? I, listen, first form is just transforming my body. You can. Yeah, I could tell. What do you mean? Look good. Thank you. First form at firstform.com. There's options for everybody. Um, I have a new front runner for my favorite bar. You know, Cookie Dough was winning for several weeks in a row, and now 
Peanut butter lover. Yeah, man. Peanut butter <laughs> lover, dude, is just Good for you. incredible. They're like meal replacements, which I didn't know. I know. I was like eating those as part of like the meal. So all you need is that. I know. You don't want to like eat a lot with that at the same You're time. You're losing weight. Hell no. That's your energy. You're mm-hmm. going to be able to burn that off for a bit. You don't need to eat anything else. No. It's simple. You put it in your bag. You're okay. And you know what the best part is? When you're with First Form, you kind of get like lined up with like a life. Everyone who works there is like a life coach. See They're, Nick's post the other day? What did he say? Well, he had his shirt off this time. He did? Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how to Kate's look. not allowed to look at it. Did it look exactly <laughs> how you thought it would look? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect human being. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. First Form Nick. First Form Nick. It's like, I'm just, I'm just showing people that you can get this way. He popped out of the bag. <laughs> He took his shirt off and he's doing like a th- like a scan of his back and stuff. Oh, oh yeah. god! Oh yeah! Really? Oh yeah! Hey, you shouldn't be doing all that. No, no, no. Because there's people. He's he's explaining to people. Yeah, but he's, some people. He's, listen, this is some Nick. people who Nick. shouldn't be doing that. Oh, they do do that, and I don't like that. I'll show when you one right now. No, I know. I don't want to see it. But Nick can, and Nick's not doing it for girls. He's not doing it to be like, look, I'm cool. He's actually trying to help people. Like yes. Nick is like the nicest, oh. most. Patient, humble, patient, best dude in the world. Like honestly, yes, he looks like a movie star. Yes, he looks like a movie star. But when he posts those pics, it's not like, "Look, I'm cool looking." No, he's like, "I'm trying to help you because I have fans that need to see me do this to get motivated yeah, every day." Yeah. And I completely agree with that. Mm-hmm. But he was sure. But I will say, some people are just. Very and I bet you, there's a lot of women folk in St. Louis, like, "Oh, Nick." <laughs> And just creeping him out. I, is there such thing as being too confident for some people? Though I mean, some people put it Let out see. there. Let me oh, see. Are sure. they obese? Well, I might. Hey, Andy, if you took a picture of me with my shirt off right now, I'd kill you if you posted it. I look like a goddamn mutant. You put yourself up there. No, Kate. Listen, when Kate was taking pictures of me down guy, at Florida, in fact, in Florida, is, but he's putting his before and after. Oh stuff. Jesus! All right, I can't. Yeah, I know. I mean, should you do that? I would not do that. I mean, you need. Why do people want to see you? You need a good six weeks on no, first No, you need form, to be cut right? up, too. You need six weeks on first one before you can start doing this. I ain't doing that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. You don't even look that much better. I know. Yeah, I know. Just, you don't I need to do that. I feel bad for... Yeah, but you don't need to do that. I mean, I just... Listen, if I'm Nick and I'm cut very up... Very tough. To if I'm Nick and I'm cut up, I'm like, look, this is what I did. Look yeah. what I'm doing. Blah, blah, blah. Like, he's... Like, honestly, Nick is not doing that. To get attention in the way that you think he's no. trying to help. His, oh my god! I'm, I swear. Hey, you see, the if question, there's any other guy, I'd be like, "Fuck you! You, You're, the, you, you look see good." The you question do, that I asked Nick him the different. other day, what? I wanted yes. to know. No, I know he got back to you in two seconds. Like, and then we started talking about tornadoes. Because that just well, because you're putting false you know, I know, fear. I, you're putting he's fear trying to help in you with everybody. your diet and it turned into tornado talk. Yeah, but like you're putting your fear monger. I, I didn't mean to. You know how the people that just like like. Like the hypochondriacs, like the COVID yeah, I know. It was like a kind of like. Put your bit. mask on. <laughs> vaccinated. The unvaccinated is killing people. <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. Let's just hope that doesn't happen again. These nutbags. Oh God. Oh God. Put your mask on. Put it on. Satan. Well, people do that. Oh, God, get away they from get me. They very, uh... Uh, man. Oh, my God. Well, let's do a little wake-up call. Just remember, when sh- fucking shit hits the fan, just always, First do, your form own, always do your own research. Taking so my you know. life by storm, Cam. You look good, dude. You know? But I wanted to know which um, shake to make that, like, if you're... You know, you can drink some shakes if you're not working out and stuff like that. Because you don't want to get fat. No, you d- if you're not working out, you need to take too much protein. No. Like, there's a balance to everything. You can do in your food intake. Well, how about just go to the app and, and, and jot it down and ask questions on there. Hey, They'll how go. do you make your chicken thighs on the uh, on the barbecue grill? Fuck what what temperature? Um, I, and for how long? You can go on lo- each side. Shit, an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30. What? Yeah, not on each side. You keep it on the bone side. This is, what are you talking about? You don't chicken? flip them? Well, you can at the end, but you don't need to because the, the skin's going to get crispy anyway. So an hour 20? Yeah, du- indirect heat. Because I figure that's what I'm going to make you indirect when, you, when heat. you come over. It's indirect heat. Well, on my Traeger. At 275. Put it on for an hour and a half. And that that, that crisp well, uh, on the skin mm-hmm. will crisp up. And those chicken thighs are dang good. Hold on. Dang good. You're telling me, how do I know if it's indirect heat? If it's You put a- the fucking heat on the other side of the goddamn grill. 
I don't do oh, that. Oh, you have a Traeger. Yeah. So you're okay. Yeah, so just keep it on there for... Two hours? Um, You could probe it if you it's want. It's going to be like but you rubber. Can look at, no, it's not. Dude, those things are hard to overcook. They got tons of bone in them. Oh, the chicken. Yeah, they're protected. They with can the make skin. them dry though. Man, chicken thighs don't get dry. Dude. I gotta give chicken my my girls dry. a shout out from Selly Salt, by the way, because they're sending me more. Uh, my my son yeah. calls it hockey salt. I was all out of that. Yeah, it's good stuff. Damn good. What's Those up, are, girls? What's up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, say hi to them, will you? What up, girls? Um, first form, firstform dot com, and get your own life coach, man, and get your life in the right direction, yeah, Cam. Absolutely. If Kai only had first form in his life. All right, Sparks is Sparks.com, Cam. Had a great weekend with Sparks. You know, sometimes, uh, can you over-sharpen your skates? Or is yeah. A, can you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you'll wear it down, but I mean, if you have sharp skates, you can always dull them up. You know, you just, like, you you know, you kind of, like, uh, take your skates on the, um, the plastic area. I wouldn't do that. You're so old school, then. Well, like, you know, no one's doing old. that anymore. All right, then don't do it. I don't okay, care. I don't know what kind of advice you're giving the people right now. I see you skate. I mean, this, they, these people have a big game to play, and Cam's like, oh, just go rub your skates on the plastic. Oh, I have to go rip your you ankle tell them out. to go walk on the concrete, too. Why don't go you? rip your ankle out when you're trying to make a turn because your skates are too sharp. All right, whatever. Whatever you want to do. No big deal. It's all good. I'll tell you this, though, Cam. When you have a Sparks, you get a perfect skate sharpening every do. time. Every time. It is a perfect sharpen. And there's nothing wrong with that, man. You want to take your game to the next level. You want to have good edge work. Now, what do edges give your game, Cam? Well, you get speed. You turn off a guy's easy. It's hard to <clears throat> it's hard to uh, pin a guy to the boards when he's got good edges. Ask Peter Forsberg and those guys. Man, mm-hmm. they'll spin off you so fast, your head will spin. Dude. You're right. You're right. If you had bullshit fucking skate sharpening like with fucking dipshit Seth boy, fucking cookie crumbles all over the place. He's sharpening your skates. You're going to blow a tire and bust out your AC joint. That guy's smoking doobies all goddamn night. Looking up Playboy from his daddy from 1984. He's sharpening your skates? What kind, of, what kind of TV you think he's watching at night? Black and white? Black and or white. a really big one because his mom and dad are rich. And he's got no like vision in life. Oh, so he's just a, just a 100% dipshit. He's dip living shit. off his parents. Dude. Yeah. Well, he's probably got a fat-ass TV down there playing. Doesn't walk the dog. Playing fucking Fortnite, yelling at ten year olds. You know, but well, you sharpen your skates the next day. You sharpen your. You skates. want this guy to sharpen your skates? God, no. I don't know if I'm doing anything Seth, around me. Eating Cheetos at night. And there's a Seth that works with us on the radio. Uh, he, and thinks he thinks we're talking about because him. I know people are like calling into the show. I know. They think it's him. Hey, there's I'm more like, than one him. Seth. We created Seth no, a Seth year and a half ago. Seth works at the rink, dude. I know we're we ha- we created him a year and a half ago. Yeah, it just didn't connect till yeah. now. Okay. I know. It's kind of get, becoming a thing. Is there more? There's, there's, there's and then the Leo with the skates, with the, with the, with the you know, the Leo that high Dude, sticks Leo you. is playing but now Fortnite Carlo's with me. Seth. Now, Carlo Koyako is like, my son's name's Leo. I'm um, like, man, yeah, I can't, I, I can't well, please everybody. I know. <laughs> you cannot please everybody. And we love Carlo. Love Carlo. So Carlo's like, oh, my son's Leo. I'm like, fuck. He's the best. Too. Why little, did it pop Little Leo. Head? I think he just had a birthday, yeah, too. Yeah, I know. He went through a bunch I'll of shit. I'll give a little, sh- a little shout out to Leo Koliakamo. So listen, I can't please everybody with the no, names, No, you cannot. Man. But this is the truth. Like, damn. That's who's sharpening your skates, and this is why you take it out of Seth's hands and you get your own Sparks skate sharpener. Yeah. S-P-A-R-X, sparks.com. Go there today and get your own skate sharpener. Listen, there's nothing more convenient than uh, when you have no time and you get to go down in, into your hockey room, basement, wherever you keep it, garage, wherever it is, and you sharpen your own skates, dude. And five minutes later, your skates are sharpened, and you're off, and you're on your way, and you're in control of the situation. I've been putting the uh, promo code in, like, random. Like, there's, like, a Sparks community Facebook page, Cam, with, like, thousands and thousands of people who yeah, have joined. Good, and people in. ask questions, and I just randomly uh, put our promo Good. code in there. Help the business. And so people, I didn't know how many people actually go to the Sparks community page, and people are just dying laughing, and they're sending me my posts. I'm like, well, yeah, that's what I do. You got to quit. You're worried about anything. Just put our promo code in. It solves a lot of things with Sparks and Sparks. Oh, good, baby. Uh, Bellman and Bellman.com, man. I put a message up there on Instagram the other day. Did you see that? I asked the trivia question. Hundreds and hundreds of people. Oh, Oh, my God. Answering the question. Some people were saying Hoosiers and got it wrong. Oh. A lot of people were saying. Well, it's kind of the same thing. It is. Because I asked the question at Bellman, you don't get any what? Swinging decks. Some people were saying sushi. 
I said, no, you do no, get sushi. No, you don't. That's yeah, you dumb, do. too. And I was telling people, they were like, you don't get any. I'm like, no, you get a lot of sushi. You guys got to ask for it. It's like when you go to like an In-N-Out burger, you got to ask for the uh, animal uh, style. It's like underground. Like well, people don't you, know about it. If you ask for the sushi, they will bring it out to you, dude. Dumb. Bellman and Bellman.com, Cam, on one side of the street, you got the Buick GMC. On the other side, you got Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Cam's looking for that Jeep two-door small wheels pink with flames on the side, but he's actually driving a Jeep. This is what a phony this guy is. Okay, let me just tell you. Cam, put your mic down for a second. Let me just yeah. talk my, to my people in Saskatchewan. Yeah. In the, and uh, all, all, all around, dude. All up and down Canada. Anyone who's working hard and uh, digging ditches and uh, driving trucks, my type of people. Yeah. Um, Cam's talking about he would never drive one because it's for high school kids, and it's for like, and, he, and now now he is. Yeah, I mean, I get a free one, but... No, no, no. Now you're driving it. Well, I get a free one. They want me to promote it. But I, I do think it is directed towards younger kids. And yeah, I but think you that love it. You're like, oh, look at this I bad took, boy. Well, I took, the, the, I took the, the doors off. I took the top off. And I put the it in the garage. The neighbor did. Well, they, he helped me. Because it's not easy to do. But once that's all, it's like having the best side-by-side -side in the league, man. Like, that thing goes fast. I've taken it out, uh, off-road. Like, it's got huge tires on it. It's the... Uh, it's the high country or it's the high, whatever it is. It's like Highland. Highland or whatever it is. And it's 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 uh, jacked up. It's got gigantic tires. You got to put your seatbelt on, man, and you can't have your phone in your pocket. Like, shit flies out of that thing. But it's like having the best side-by-side -side in, the, in the neighborhood. And uh, it is very fun. But it's not an everyday car for me. But they want me to drive it and look like a shit kicker. And so I'm going to do it. Get out to Troy, Missouri. Get out there today. Bellman, Bellman.com. Say hi to Danny, boy, will you? What up, Danny? And uh, Dale. What up, Dale? And Kenny. Hey, Kenny. What's up, babe? Great people. Good people, man. Great people. Damn right. Uh, gel sticks, by the way. Get your training done right. The number way, one uh, way to train, Cam, and get yourself prepared when you're uh, looking to shoot better, stick handle better, overall perform better, is by using that weighted stick from Gel Sticks. G E L S T X. It's the number one training mechanism you can find in the entire sport. They also have golf and they have lacrosse. They have everything. So it truly is incredible. Get it and get it today. Gel Sticks and GelSticks.com. Tell John that we sent you over there Damn from right. the Camastrick podcast. All right, let's get to Rittenhouse right now. The one and only Jared Bull. On this edition of the Cam and, Strick, uh, Cam and Strick podcast, great conversation great coming up now with the one and only Jared Bull. He's also an assistant coach, man, with the damn Columbus right. Blue Jackets. Enjoy this one. Hairclub.com, baby. Oh, you're damn right. Go to our landing page today, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Regrow, restore, and replace that hair. Don't wait. Now to the interview. Hello. Bowler. Jared Rittenhouse. Hey. Oh, Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse. <laughs> What's going? What's going on? Can we call? Uh, we just call people by their middle names on this show, house, just so dude. you know. We just go. That's back. a fancy name. Yeah, not many people call me that, but well, I'm you okay are going to be called that now. Hey, is that a family name? Is that your dad's name, or how'd they come up with that? Yeah, it's in my it's in yeah. my dad's fam. My dad's side of family, a uh, couple generations back, so it's still in the. Still in the family. I like it. Listen, now, uh, Rittenhouse, that was the name of the guy. Who, Kyle. Kyle yeah. Rittenhouse. See, Bull, you got two different things going on. Real quick, like with the name Jared, were you like, okay, cool, my name's Jared. And then that <laughs> son of a... bring up the no, no, no. Subway Then the guy? son of a bitch from Subway uh. goes out and does weird things. And now, like, Jared's a, a name that's associated with that weirdo. Were you like, damn you? Yeah, I... Yeah, that didn't bother me. I got that in the Jared's Jewelers a lot, too. Oh, she so, went you know. to Jared. Oh, he she went, went to, to, are he you, went to Jared. Are you, like, sitting with uh, right in front of the Christmas tree and just opening up the engagement ring, Jared? I mean, that, that, is, the, that is the perfect scene every yeah, holiday yeah. season. Uh, I'm not the most romantic guy, so. No. Uh, hey, did, no, I, but, did I read that your wedding was just you and your wife? You had no oh. guests there? Is that true? No, no, no. We had guys, a lot of hockey guys. It turned into a little bit of a shit show. Where was that did. at? In Illinois? Uh, no, we did in the Pocono Mountains in uh, Pennsylvania. Was, uh, she grew up going uh, vacationing there, so was, she kind of always wanted to get married, and I didn't really care where we went, and I didn't have much say anyway. So no, no, you didn't. Uh, it was a good spot, actually. It was a lot of fun. So you grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina? No, he's from Chicago. Crystal Lake, I, uh, the Crystal Lake yeah. lease. Hold on a second. 
Did you grow up? Yeah, you, I was were born, you born in, there? Uh, That's what I meant to say. I was born in Charlotte. Yeah, I, I don't have any memories of living there. I was young. Uh, I, yeah, I grew up in Crystal Lake uh, pretty much my whole life until until junior hockey. Are you the first NHL player ever out to come out, of, come out of Charlotte? North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, you really yeah. are. You should. You got to own that, yeah, Jared. Yeah, there's some. Uh, there's some other guys. Like I've looked it up. I know Ben Smith. He played in Chicago. I think he's from North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, Cam, you remember Patrick O'Sullivan? I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think he was from there. Or he he was born there or something. He had, he has some ties to North Carolina somehow. Um, but those are the only two that I can I. I saw or could think of patrick o'sullivan joined he was, us he was fucking he was he, a damn good player he did uh, i'll never forget going to that 2003 draft man that was craziness man he, he had like security the nhl hired oh, really? security for him yeah because yeah, like, he, yeah, he was arranged for uh, he, he had to be separated from his dad his oh, dad was right. crazy that's right that's remember right. you remember that yeah whole story. I've, I, I've seen uh i think uh sports Network, one of the the stations in canada had a pretty good documentary on on his upbringing and yeah, it was crazy. Jared, we talked about it at length, okay, for an hour and a half, and Cam doesn't remember having what? this conversation with with Patrick O'Sullivan. No, he I told know. us the whole no, story. I do remember, damn okay, it. Okay. I just got to think. <laughs> man, my memory's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'm with you, man. Hey, well, so what do you have to do today? Like, what's your game plan? What's like, uh, you, you just practice today, you just get done, now you're driving to the airport? Today was, to, to, yeah, I actually, I'm almost at the airport. I wanted to get there before you guys call, so I'm not in the car. Um, today was easy. Cause we played last night. We played Ottawa last night at home, and we had the day off, so it was just meet at the plane. You remember those days? Those, yeah. are, those are good ones. So we yeah. just meet at the plane at 2, um, and that was it. So it was easy. This is when, like, players will complain, though. Like, because coaches and GMs or management, whatever, they'll look at this like it's a day off, yeah. but it's a travel day, so it's not really a day off. Yeah, well, they're pretty strict about that. The, the, the guys are on it. So, yeah, no, it's not a day off. Technically, it's not a day off. On the calendar, it's not. So um, they still get their three or four, whatever, whatever it is, mandatory days off. Yeah, they call them the CBA days, right? So it's like once a week you get your CBA day where it's a guaranteed day off. Like, are, are, do coaches look forward to the days off as well, or are you like, oh fuck, we got to have a day off tomorrow? You know what? They're actually not the day. The days off for the players aren't really days off for us. Um, they're obviously they're a lot less work, but uh, a lot of times we still go down and meet and, and just kind of get ready for the next day. I didn't realize how much went into coaching um, when I was a player. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no. So we don't really have as many days off as the players, but, um, we're not physically doing all the stuff they're doing. You're so not blocking shots. <laughs> You're not blocking shots anymore. Hey, no, nope, not so, blocking shots, not getting hit, not taking nope. hits, not getting punched. So it's, it's actually not bad. So what's Been your, good. so what surprised you? Like, give me your, give me your day set up. Like, what do you have to do on a busy day? Uh, game day or whatever. Yeah, game day would probably be the busiest. Yeah, you get there, you get there early. Um, so we we have a pretty early staff led by our head coach Lars. He's he's a morning guy, so um, you know you got to kind of follow along what he what his schedule is. Um, so you get there. I'm there at seven seven thirty. Um, you just kind of plan uh, plan the day. Our, we've had a ton of injuries, a ton of guys coming in and out this year. So it's, there's rosters always changing. Um, so we've had to deal with that. Uh, then you get your, your game plan for the day, morning skate, uh, meet with some players. If, if you have that on your schedule, uh, that's something that I've, I've started to love to do is the, yeah. the one-on-one -on -one meetings. It's been, I, it's been a lot of fun. I wish as a player, I had more one-on-one -on -one stuff because I wasn't a, you know, you know, you have those big meetings, the team meetings, uh, PK and five on five. And, and I'm not one to, I was never good in school. So I kind of, my brain kind of drifts somewhere mm -hmm. out and then I leave the meeting and I have no idea what, what was said. Um, so I, I've made it a point, uh, for me is to do a lot more one-on-one -on -one stuff because I think it gets the point across and it's kind of an open discussion. It's not me telling the telling the player what to do it's this is what i see what are you seeing and and i feel like it's worked really well uh for me personally so you get those out of the way and then 
you have a little downtime in the day, I try to get a workout in and then you do your five on five pre scout and away you go. Wow, well, look, man, you're oh, that's busy. A, that's a good gig I mean, right there, though. Yeah, but coaching is no joke, man. No that is, it is time consuming, yep. Yep. and you got to truly love doing it. If you don't have the passion for it, you're not going to survive. Right. But you're right, Columbus, man. You guys have had a ton of injuries. I think you used five goaltenders oh, this God. year, a ton of different players, which is typical for teams that are at the bottom of the standings, man. I mean, you got to stay healthy. If you don't stay healthy, you really have no chance. Um, but like, uh, in terms of like coaching, man, how'd you get into it? Like, people would say, Jared Bull. Just the way that you played, like maybe that that style of game, that 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 mentality wouldn't transition into coaching. But you know, we see it here with Craig Berube, the success that he's had, man. Like, Damn right. uh, did you always or did you ever see this for yourself, Jared? Like, could you have ever seen the you know yourself going into coaching? No, I didn't plan it out this way. Um, you know what? I, for me, I could, as a player, I mean, the style of play, you hear that all the time. And, and I do a lot of work with the guys on the ice and before and after practice. And they're like, wait, what skill are you teaching them? I saw you play. <laughs> uh, so you, you hear that, but it's more, you know what? As a player, I always, I always pretty much for the most part got along with every guy on my team and can relate to every guy on my team. Um, or at least I tried to. So as a coach, I feel like it's, it's helped me because I mean, you know, guys are from all over the world from all different upbringings. So you kind of got to get to relate to them. And, and the main thing that I've found so far in this, in this process is, is getting to know the guy and getting the player to trust you. And then he'll listen to you. Listen to you. Um, you could be the smartest guy in the world, smartest coach in the world. If the player doesn't trust you. He's not going to, He's not going to take the info you're giving him and, and use it because, I mean, it goes in one ear and out the other. So um, I feel feel so far I've made really good relationships with the players um, and they can trust me and they know I have, have their best interest. And uh, and like I said, I don't know everything. Um, I've been watching a lot of video and, and been working hard at it, but I don't know everything. So I, I got kind of got this open discussion with the players um, and, and I feel like it's really, really been working and, and seen some improvement in our guys and, and I love doing it. Yeah. Well, they it's need good. a player like you, or yeah, a coach right. like you, Damn you know, right. who played the game, who can speak the same language, yes. who has their best interests at yeah. heart. They know that they can Team confide guy. in you yes. and you may not take everything in your meeting back to the coaching room, man. And some stuff yeah. can stay between you and, uh, and the player. Hey, what'd you tell that Lane Pedersen though? You, you met with him after he had that, uh, that, that fight with Trent Freddie. Did you tell him, Hey, oh, Jesus. did you tell him, do not do that oh, anymore? Jared Rittenhouse. Don't be fighting. <laughs> Rittenhouse, you, you got know what? You gotta let him know. Come on now. <laughs> Fred, that Frederick, he's a tough kid, man. He's a St. Louis kid, isn't he? Uh, he is. Yeah, just baby. like, hey, you got a couple of them God on your roster. Right, like, boy. you got Joshua Dunn. You got the Hunter McCown kid there right yeah. now. So I know both those kids really well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Hunter's, he's brand new. He's, he's funny. I mean, fresh out of college. Uh, yeah. Good kid. Uh, Josh, you know what? He played, he's been with us the last two games. And that's funny you bring his name up because I, uh, after the game last night, we were all kind of going over the game, and I'm like, you know what? That Josh Dunn stuck out for me. He's not the flashiest player. He's not a pretty player, but, man, he'll throw his body in there. And, and I like – I really like what he's doing. He's got 20 goals in the American League, I think. And, man, this kid's got a – he's got a shot at making a career out of this. He's uh, he's willing to do whatever it takes. He yeah, protects the puck, kid. too. Yeah. Like, down low, he can protect the puck. Man. That was always his game, yeah, even when he was big, like a – Yeah, uh, 16, 17. Hey, but what'd you tell the Patterson kid, though, when you met <laughs> with him? Like, when you see him fight, do you just kind of close yeah. your eyes knowing when a kid is going to be, like, overmatched in that situation? You know what, Petey, he's uh, – we got him off of waivers. We, we needed some bodies, and, and he – and I've spent some time with him, and he he's really, really grown, and he was taking steps. He, he was playing really well. Um, and it was good to see. And then uh, I didn't really talk to him about fighting, um, but he cross-checked Bergeron right in the – I don't think it was on purpose, but it happened. And uh, you know what? Good for him. He he, It, it sucks what happened. He kind of got one punch there by Frederick, who's a, a tough kid. But you know what? He answered the bell. Um, he didn't shy away from it. I think he knew he had to do it. He cross-checked their captain in the in the ear and – and and I like what happened. Frederick hit him. He didn't showboat after it was over. Yep. Um, yep. And you know, shit happens. He, I I, I probably would have told. I don't. I don't think he's fought much. So my advice would probably be not square up with a guy that that knows what he's doing. Maybe kind of rush at him and and get him tied up before you start throwing. But yeah. um, get your grip. 
Yeah, but Cam, you know, man, you learn from experience. You get you get beat up a few times, and and you kind of you learn what to do and what not to do, and and you're not going to win them all. So um, I have no problem with it. It sucks what happens, but good on him for answering the bell, and and he knew he had to do it, and he did it, and took it like a man, and and he'll be back. Is he okay? So, Is he okay? Yeah, yeah, he's 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 been out since then. Um, I mean, we only have five games or six games left or something like that, so I don't know if he'll be back. Oh, so this he year. did. So he got rocked. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, he, he got, got his job. Job. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he didn't he just pop covered. up. Okay. Okay. Pretty good. But I, I talked to him. At, I talked to him in between periods. I saw him, and and he was upset about it, and I think a little embarrassed. Because anytime you get beat up, yeah. it's a little. I, I was more worried about getting embarrassed, to tell you the truth, and getting beat up. Um, but he he was good, and uh, I just told him, man, that takes balls. It's not easy to do. So no, good not. on him for good on him for doing it. Yeah, you gotta you gotta learn from it. But on the other hand, it's like you you did step up. I didn't know he he's gonna be out that long. I thought he popped back yeah. up. Damn. But you're okay. right, man. Like I, I think if fans really looked at looked at it like that. Like you gotta have the balls to be willing to drop the gloves. It's not always. But on about, the other hand, you can't get caught like that. No, either. I know. But he'll learn. Yeah. He'll learn, like you said. No, I know, but no, yeah, it's yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, it's a tough way to learn, but um, yeah, but I was I was impressed how Frederick handled it. He could have he could have handled it way different but but he knocked him got mm-hmm. him good and skated to the box so uh good on him for doing that hey what'd your mom and dad do for a living how'd you get into hockey i know you north carolina then you go to illinois like who'd you yeah. play triple a you start getting into it at a young age yeah at a young age my dad grew up in detroit so uh he was a big red wings fan so it was easy i mean at that time when i was growing up it was easy to to be a red wings fan uh, they were pretty good and they were winning a lot. So I fell in love with them. And, uh, yeah, my dad was just a general contractor, hardworking guy. Um, my mom was, was at home with, I had two brothers, so three boys. Um, and yeah, I was, I was kind of the only one that got into sports. My brothers are both musicians and, and photography. They're kind of got the artsy side of it. And I was never into that. Um, I was never really that great at school or didn't pay attention as much as I probably should. Um, but I just fell in love with hockey, uh, at an early age and my dad got me into it. And, uh, for some reason, ever since I was a kid, man, I, I, I loved Iserman and Fedorov and those guys, but I, I was drawn towards the McCarty's and Joey Kosher and Chris Draper. And, and those were the guys I, I just, I thought the, the way they played was awesome. And I kind of modeled or tried to model my game after, and those kind of players and uh yeah that, that's how i got into it and it's all i wanted all i can remember wanting to do as a kid hey so when you're when you're coaching though like you said you weren't great in school and all that and a lot of people listening can relate to that man there's no doubt and and you didn't have to be good at school because you were obviously were good at hockey but like when you're coaching do you have to know technology do you have to know computers like are you are you are you is it kind of like a new world from that standpoint like just in terms of how to function in the professional world, man. Cause you're no longer a player. Now you got to be able to do some computer stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great question. Um, yeah, big time. And I, and I'm learning as I go, uh, a guy on our staff, he's really, really good with the computers and stuff. So I've been, I've been sitting with him uh, a lot and doing video and, and learning that. And, and, uh, I'm I, four, four years into this and, uh, I've learned a lot and, and I wouldn't say I was a dumb kid. I just wasn't interested in school. I got so, you. I, I got you. you I'm the same way, man. I get you, uh, so if you give me if you give me a computer and it's hockey, yeah, I'll sit there for hours and do it. Uh, yep. But you give me a school or a computer and tell me to read about I don't know biology or whatever. There's no chance yeah. I'm doing that. So um, yeah, it's it's something that I'm passionate about and and, and love and interested in. So. Um, yeah, the computer stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm not great at it. Um, but I've gotten a lot better and yeah, there's a lot of hours watching video, watching film. Um, and I kind of thought as a player, I would think the coaches kind of overcooked it a little bit. Um, but, but you need, you need to know everything and what's going on. So, uh, the hours and the time spent watching video and stuff is, uh, it's a real thing. What's the hardest thing that you have to adjust to? Like what's the most um, difficult you think? Like it's like the knowing a little about a bit about every team, every player, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, the way so, so, I've been around great coaches, uh, especially since I've been done. I spent three years on with Torts, 
Um, and, and I had a lower role, but he was, he was nice enough to, to bring me on his staff. And, and I don't know if you guys know Torts at all. He's a pretty We're trying private to get him guy. On. Uh, so to bring, yeah, good luck. I know. <laughs> but he always, he always hey he listen always jared he gets back to, gets back to me yeah, every, time, every time and he's so polite yeah. he's so he's, polite i know, I know. I'm hey, like i'm telling you that guy he'll if he hears he'll probably be pissed because i'm giving he is he is awesome one of the best but um he's a private guy and he in his locker room's his room man there's not many people allowed in his dressing room um i got some good stories i don't i don't know what i want to say now but a lot of people aren't allowed in his dressing room so for him to bring me in and bring, let me be a part of it, um, I felt a lot of responsibility, and I didn't want to let him down. I didn't want to screw up a good chance. So um, learn from him. Um, but yeah, sorry. What was your question, <laughs> Cam, Cam? What was your question? Can, can we... Well, my question was: What's the most difficult thing? Like, what's like every oh, yeah, day? Yeah, like, yeah. okay, this is the most difficult part of my job. What is it? Yeah. So for me, it's, it's knowing all the systems, all the, the, uh, face offs, like to know everything throughout the game because uh, the players will ask and, and you don't, you got to know what's going on. So for me so far, the hardest part is, is just understanding what every guy on the ice is supposed to be doing mm. in that certain play, because as a player, as a winger, for me, I knew my job and that was about it. Um, I know centermen and D were probably more responsible and knew more was going on, but, uh, so to know every, what every player on the ice is supposed to be doing at certain times has been, has been, uh, tough for me to, to get to know, but, uh, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of, of, of picking it up pretty quick. So yeah, yeah. it's okay to say, you don't know. That's one thing I've learned. It's okay to say, Hey man, I don't know. Um, because I've played with, for coaches that think they know everything, and they, and they don't. So you know that, and it's 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 okay to talk about it and say, "Hey, man, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out." But so um, for me, that's been the toughest part. Hey, are there a lot of coaches who you know that well, like who are kind of fresh out of the game? Like, like I don't know how well you know a guy like Steve Ott, who's here, who goes straight from playing. And all of a sudden, he's in the NHL. He started off as a as an eye in the sky, and and ended up finding himself down on the bench, much like you, you know. But like, uh, you don't see too many guys who don't go coaching the minors, Jared, before finding their way to a coaching staff in the NHL. You know? Yeah. No, I was. Yeah, I, I know Otter a little bit. Um, had some beers with him here and there, but I don't know him really well. Um, I know Derek McKenzie really well. And he was a, he was a coach for Florida. He's in Sudbury now, but he was in Florida for a little bit. Um, so there's some guys that I played with. Yeah. But no, man, I, I got really fortunate. Like I said, Torch let me in. Um, it was kind of his call. And, uh, yeah, I just, as a player, man, I get the opportunity. Just, you, you got to work your balls off. And, and I was willing to do whatever they, whatever they asked me, I was willing to do. It, and I never bitched about it. And, and uh, it, my role kept growing. So I don't know how long it's going to last. Maybe I will be down in the American League coaching, which will be fine. Um, but for right now, man, I'm I'm fortunate to be where I'm at, and, and I love doing it. Yeah, but, like, dude, you also, like, kicked ass and took names, dude. And, like, you were, like, the uh, face of that fucking franchise, and everybody loved you, and you are a fan favorite. And you brought people in, and you were a good teammate, and you fought everybody. Like, what? Like, No. Like, you're going to have opportunities, man. Like, you put your time in, dude. And I heard nothing but yeah. good things about you. Like, you got a great reputation. Yeah, fuck yeah, you deserve that. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I guess so. But still. <laughs> Let me pump your tires up, dude. Who cares, Rittenhouse? Let me pump your tires up. <laughs> well, I think I told you I was always scared shitless of you, even if I didn't act like I was. But <laughs> most of the time I was, the guys I was fighting, um, yeah, but you fought but a yeah. shit ton of guys, man. You fought everybody too. Like, who were you yeah, worried? Were you really worried about me, or were you, were you worried about fucking Big Stevie McIntyre? That's gonna be listening to this episode. I never too. fought. I never fought McIntyre. I God. fought Bugard. I, I fought Bugard. I was. Oh, I was a little worried in that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. You? Here, you, were, you were nice. I don't know if you. I don't know if anyone's told you, but you were, you had a couple screws loose. I know. Uh, oh, so yeah, I'm yeah, normal was, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> But no, I, I, yeah, there was, a, I mean, I was ready to go whoever, whoever wanted to, but I was in, uh, definitely a little, some butterflies in the stomach sometimes. Well, that's normal. And if you don't have that, that's when you get fucking knocked out. 
Have you ever got yeah, caught? Have you, know. you ever got caught bad? Yeah, yeah, a few times. Um, you know what's funny? I fought, and and this is bad. I fought. You remember a guy named Andres Lilia? He wasn't a tough guy, but he was, he was. He was a big defenseman, yeah. strong in Detroit, and mm-hmm. and like you said, I think I went in a little cocky. And for some reason, he caught me right on the ear. And it, it was one of the worst I've ever been hit. And I, I don't know where it came from, but I'll never forget it. And I was like, whoa. And it was the last time I ever kind of went in a fight thinking I'm the man. Because um, I got popped good, man. And it hurt. And I couldn't. I remember I was eating soup for like a week. Like my jaw was killing. Oh. And and I just remember going into the fight thinking like, I'm going to dust. Like, this. who's this guy? <laughs> and popped me good. And it's the last time I'll ever or I ever went into a fight thinking this is going to be easy. Yeah, you need to get shit kicked once in a while. Just get caught. Yeah. Just a little wake-up call. Like, hey, whoa. what hurts the most Like where when you get hit? You just said the Depends, ear. Andy. People don't think about that. Is it, the oh. no, is it the nose? Is it the chin? Is it the ear? Is it the eye? Back of the head. Where is it? No, I don't, I don't know what you guys think. For me, the nose and, like, my face, my forehead, like, for some reason I could take punches there. It didn't really bother me much. Um, but yeah, the jaw and the, like the side of the ear and the jaw, and then you're eat, you like you're you're eating soup for a week like that, and the, you get cut in the mouth like that stuff was a pain in the ass. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. No, because well, that's what when your jaw expands, that's how you get knocked out. So you never want to get hit in the jaw, Andy. What do you mean expands? When you get knocked out, it's because your jaw fucking expands, oh. so it, it it goes loose and it it rattles your brain enough to buckles you when you get caught in the jaw and the nose. Damn, you've gotten cry. smarter. You've gotten smarter. Listen, you. he's learning computers. I, I'm learning things. No, I got <laughs> yeah, punched fifty fucking times. Like I know what knocks you out and what doesn't. <laughs> Sometimes in the temple will catch you. Mm-hmm. I got I got punched in the back of the head one time. And it fucking spun me for like two days, dude. And it didn't knock. Yes, but you yeah. go black, dude, and you spin. And I'm like, fuck. But it went, then it went, it went away for some reason. Hey, and I was yeah. partying. Let me <laughs> let me ask you this, because um, you you just said torts. He like his room was his sanctuary. Yeah. Like, who's he not letting in there? Like, does he let the owners in? Like, I mean, like the owners' partners. Like, does he let sponsors come in? Like, because some people, I listen. I've seen it where. Oh, yeah. Like not many people are getting behind those doors, and I and I get it. So like, who's he not yeah, letting in? I mean, <laughs> I, I'm still in Columbus, and I love your organizations. So I'm just gonna say there's some yeah, there were some important people that um, oh yeah were, were thinking twice before walking through the doors when when Torch was in the room. Yeah, I've seen I that, that man. I did the same. I, I'd probably be the same way, man. No shit. I would my want, room. Yeah, it's like I don't want everybody like, cruising through here. I know what you know what's going on if you yeah. unless. You have to, yeah. or like mm-hmm. you're but part But that's of kind it. of how he that that was part of his thing, though. Like he, his teams, they they they're they're a team, man. Like he's he's got a son in the military, and he's he's kind of got that mindset that you you're gonna do who's ever in this room, it's your room, but you guys got to play your asses off for mm-hmm. each other. It got to have each other's back, and 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 I'll and I'll have your back, kind of mentality, and and I think that's what he kind of preached, and that's why it was like that. And and I love that. I I I, I hate seeing. I mean, I get it. Friends and family want to see the locker room and stuff. It's great, but on game day and stuff, man, I don't want anyone there except the guys going to going to battle that night. Dude, that's and, how it, it is here. I know. That's how it is here. I mean, like, I don't I don't see a lot of like people cruising through now. Before would Walt would bring in back in the no like back Ooh. in the day. I mean, you'd have. Different owners coming in town, previous oh, yeah. ownership group. Yeah. They're bringing like a group of people Kids. through after. I day. remember that. I and was there with and sometimes I could just tell, like, not everybody's comfortable with that. You know, even the players, man. The players yeah. probably appreciate a coach yeah. or a GM who has that mindset. Like, hey, we're not going to let like, like just any any Tom, Dick, and Harry just cruise through here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I like that too. Um, but yeah, he had his rules, and and you stuck by his rules, and he was fair, man. He was. Is, is what you see on TV and the media is not always him, but yeah, he was he was hard, but he was fair. All right, young Jared Bull just got done dominating juniors. Your hair is flowed <laughs> back, slick yeah. back. You look handsome <laughs> as shit. You got a little bit of confidence. You go to Columbus. You start playing well. You're shit kicking guys. Like, how was that atmosphere there? Were you single? Did you go cruise the town? How are the people? Like, give give us like. Like, explain how it was being you, young, in Columbus, shite-kicking motherfuckers. Yeah, I don't Yeah, it was, uh, 
it all happened fast. I, I played my overage year in Plymouth. Uh, we had a good team. I had a pretty decent year. And I just remember going into camp, and we had, we had that prospect camp up in Traverse City. Um, and I was just like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get noticed. And I was I was nuts. And I had a couple other guys, like Tom Sestito, we had Eric Dorsett. Like, we, we kind of fed off each other and almost egged each other on. So it was, it was mm. fun. Um, Kanopka was there. Like, we had and John Morassi. Like, we had guys. <laughs> like, we had guys that. We're all, we're always trying to one up each other. So like the the dumber, crazier shit you could do, like the other guy would try to do something that you know to get noticed more than you. And and uh, yeah, I just kind of and I was playing well. I was I was young. I I was fearless, um, and I was I was scoring a little bit. Yeah. So it wasn't fighting. Like I I was putting up a little bit of points. And um, I remember after training camp, Hitch was like uh can you do this for 82 games and i said absolutely and uh that was it he goes okay you're on the team um but as soon as you slow down you're done and uh you guys know hitch oh, so yeah, he, yeah. he gets a chance and uh yeah it kind of took off from there it was fun i mean i was young like you said um had a little bit of money was was enjoying myself um and yeah it was uh it was a little bit different back then too, because the guys that I I came up with, I mean, it's the old school guys are you, you don't see it much anymore. Uh, but there were some beauties, so I might have picked up a few bad habits uh, along the way. But for the most part, I had my head on straight and uh, and and had a pretty decent career. And uh, you know, the older I got, and, and I started getting banged up a little bit, got married, uh, my wife got pregnant, and. Uh, you know, I was, I just wasn't living that healthy of a life towards the end. And, and, uh, I had a daughter on the way and I said, I think it's, I think it's time. Yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you. And by the way, Hitch, I asked Hitch today to give me some stuff on you, whatever. I mean, he talked listen, he loves you, man. Yeah, says you're very you funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, you worked your ass off. There's, there's no doubt. Hey, you were making 1.7 at oh, one point, dude. Boy. Like, I mean, they it signed you a three-year deal yeah. making one point. Something was like a, a three-year deal over $5 million for that three-year deal, in addition to the other deals you were making, man. So you made some money. You were raking it in, dude. I'll give props to your agent for negotiating that deal for you, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was making decent money. Um, but you know what it's like, man. I, I, I didn't really understand the concept of money. I just... It, I, I never really learned um, what it was all about and finances and stuff. And, and I know a lot more now, but yeah, it's, I wasn't a huge spender, but you know, you're, you got some money, you can kind of do whatever you want. I was single. I didn't, you know, I didn't have really to anyone to answer to. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed myself a little bit. Dude, I, <laughs> hey, trust me. I get you on that homeboy. I thought I was fucking Bill Gates. <laughs> Uh, compared to your in your own little bubble with your buddies that are like living with their parents, like you're 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 making a shit ton of money. Mm -hmm. so, well, I was like, making two. I was making two hundred bucks every two weeks as an overage in Plymouth, and I thought I was rich. Yeah, compared you're to the taking the guys, guys out and shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Hey, how was it like going out when you're single? And you don't have to get detailed because I know you, I don't want to put. But but like, would girls come up to you and say, "Hi, what do you? What's what's your name? Oh, I'm Jared." What do you do? Oh, I play hockey. Do you go to Ohio State? And they're like, they're like, well, what's that? Well, I play for the Blue Jackets. Are they like, oh, I know the Blue Jackets? Or were they like, oh, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you guys are beauties. Um, they're like, we know Ohio we, State football. You got football. great hair. I'm going to go home with you anyway. But what do you do you again? Play on, you play on the football team? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The, the, Columbus isn't that big of a city. I I, love, I mean, I'm biased. I've been in Columbus a long time. Um, and the people that don't know, Columbus is, it is an awesome place to live. It is awesome. And I, but I grew up in the Midwest. I'm a Midwest guy. So it was an easy, you know, I, I love it here. Um, but yeah, it's a small town. Your, your name gets out there a little bit. Um, we had, we had some decent teams too. So a couple of years, we, you know, we were a little bit at the talk of the town, but, um, nothing trumps Ohio state football, man. No. It was, uh, it's uh it's awesome game days are awesome um so yeah every once i had a couple of buddies that played uh for the football team so that that helped me out too yeah I just hang out with them you just tell them you play for the football team i play it's football yeah. i play football and hockey yeah. hey so. I, I i need to know about columbus though like that's all i ever hear is how it's a great city Got great money. golf courses cards. i mean i remember jd I, a true story when he like was was um still running the blues and like was, was on the way out. Like, you know, the ownership group 
was out, new ownership group coming in, and you know, got wind of a meeting that he had in Columbus with the owner. And I remember saying to him, like, why would you go there? And he was like, what do you mean? That place is awesome, dude. Like, they got great neighborhoods, great restaurants, unbelievable golf courses, you know. And, and like, you know, the team is trying to find their way. You get Johnny Goudreau last offseason. I heard the same yeah. thing. What a great uh, place it is to, mm-hmm. to live. Like, what what's so different about it? Like, what's so great about Columbus? Like, I'm trying to understand. Because it is a cool college town, man. There's no question. I've been there, hung out, had a lot of fun. I was there for 10 days during a USA Hockey training camp back in 2004. It's a great place. But what yeah. what what's the secret about it? Well, you kind of said it all. I mean, it's 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 reasonable living prices. Like, there's, there's really nice areas. Um really nice homes, neighborhoods. Uh, you said golf courses. There's, I, I belong to Mirfield. Um, then there's, there's, there's probably five. I think there's five of the top 100 golf courses in Columbus, which no one would ever, ever think of. Um, and the joke around here is everything's tw- how, how far is it? 20 minutes, 30 minutes with traffic. So it's, it's easy to get around it. Yeah. It's just easy living, and and I and I was in Anaheim for two years, and it was unbelievable. It was awesome. It was we were living in Newport Beach. We were oh. blocked with the ocean. It was, uh, but both my wife and myself, we we, were, we couldn't wait to get back to Columbus, and people thought we were nuts. We were living in Newport Beach, but uh, we really we couldn't wait to get back to Columbus just because um, the people here are great. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do. You get like you said, you got the college atmosphere right on top of a, of a, actually a pretty big city atmosphere, uh, good nightlife, um, good restaurants. You got the blue jackets. You said Ohio state football. Um, how's a crime? So there's a lot of stuff to do. It's a crime. It's that a bad? Safe, yeah. It's no, it's just, it's a safe city. I mean, downtown, I think crime everywhere in the U S right now is a little bit nuts, yeah. but, um, no, we, it's a safe, I live 25 minutes, 20 minutes North of, uh, north of downtown and uh it's a great place to have a family uh, my wife grew up here so she obviously loves it and uh it's just it's a great place to live i, I can't say enough good things about it and, and uh people that come here end up there's a lot of guys that end up retiring here yeah i've heard that how, so you met your wife in columbus yeah yeah how did, yeah, how, yeah what'd you do what did you put your sunday's best on did you slick the hair back did you have a black eye <laughs> did you get in a scrap did she know who you, you get were in a scrap like, that tell, night tell me something here <laughs> yeah she, written yeah, out. come on written out. Or you're like i'm written house and she's like oh my yeah, god she'll probably tell a different story than me um but yeah i don't think her mom was a huge fan at first either which probably for good reason um but yeah she was a you know midwest girl and uh we were at a charity thing and I met her and, and, uh, yeah, that was it. But, um, it took some time to, to win the family over, like I said, for, for good reason. I think they had some questions about me, which like, what? I, wait, like, wait, 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 you, wait, 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 like questions like, like what? you're, now, you're a curious, professional athlete, like you're a pro athlete, like you didn't get in trouble. Like yeah, you're, you're, was, you're soft you know, spoken. You're not like loud. You're not like doing crazy stuff on social media. I, I don't know. Like what, what were they worried about? I, I was kind of, you know, a little bit crazy. I was fighting a lot. And uh, I don't know. I tell this, I tell people this a lot. Like for me, like in order to, to play like that, I, it was almost like this persona where everywhere I went, I felt like I had to be or act like the toughest guy in the room. Cause I just, that's, you know, like I, like you said, I didn't say much, but I just, you know, like I just, I loved, I just loved that, that feeling and it carried onto the ice and it was just kind of a lifestyle. So, um, yeah, you know, I was going out a little bit and, yeah, uh, I get that. you know, so I have two daughters now and I'm not sure I would, I would let them date a young me. Oh my God. Uh, I know. I know. I know. Remember what we talk about in the locker room? Hey, did you get in yeah. fights at the bar and stuff? Like, were you getting fights off the Andy. ice? <laughs> I'm asking. No, no. There, there was, I mean, there was, there was a few, but nothing that we got in big trouble for. Just, just stupid shit. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was just hey. like any... T- Five year old or twenty year old single guy that was. Oh, yeah. Hey, were you part of the? It just I just thought of this. Were you part of the big like controversy with the uh, the Blues and the Blue Jackets over like what? where to play soccer before the game? Yeah, like, yeah, I think it was, I think it was Ty Conklin. <laughs> oh, Ty! Because <laughs> it was wasn't like Jason Ty. Chimura or or like one of those. No, it was um, it was Umberger. It was Umberger. Umberger. That's exactly who it was. So it was in Columbus. That was his own team. And I don't know if you were. Were you on the team at this yeah. time? Okay, so. And they, they were playing soccer, 
like underneath and like I guess the blues players were told they couldn't play yeah. there. Like Steiner was all like worked up yeah, about it yeah. too. So like what happened? Yeah, Break there. down the soccer uh controversy. I was there for that. Yeah, I think I can't remember if we stole their ball or they stole our ball. One someone took one of the team's soccer balls and then I think Umby and uh Ty Conklin like got chest to chest. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like I I mean those are the I don't know Conklin at all, but I, I didn't think Umby would get that, but I guess, I don't know. He was, he wanted that soccer ball. Oh my He's God, dude. Really? They're all good dudes, you know? Were yeah. You, oh yeah. Yeah. You yeah, were yeah. on that team. Yeah, I was on a Ty team. Conklin Andy, thank you. Team. Well, I want to make Andy sure. Andy always let me Listen, know well, where Cam, I was and Cam what I did. Cam sometimes life. confuses himself, no, man, like, like no. where he is. Andy, Andy lets me know what I did in life. <laughs> Jesus hey. Christ. Well, I always remember we come to St. Louis and Maureen skate cam. I'm, I'm sure you never took an option or weren't allowed to take an option. So you were always out there. So, and I'd come on the bench, see who's skating and, and you'd be skating around the ice and he'd come over. Yeah, you ready? You ready to go tonight? We're going tonight. And, and like the boys would be like, dude, this guy's nuts. <laughs> you know him? And I'm like, I don't, I mean, I know him a little bit, but not really well. And I, I guess he wants to go tonight, but well, yeah, well, we, baby, let's go. We, it's a Saturday we, night. It's homie. a home I game. I got people in the stands. I need to go. Oh, yeah. We, we had some good battles. Oh, yeah. it, it, well, I, I loved it. It was like Royal Rumble in that bill. I mean, Scott, it's a little different now, but every time we went in there with you and DJ King, oh, and God. I mean, you guys always had tough teams. And it was, those were my Chris Stewart. Like, those games in St. Louis were so they were so fun. I loved I loved playing in St. Louis. Yeah, we hated each other for a bit there. I remember like seeing yeah. I was looking you up and stuff. There's like articles about Columbus mm. and the Blues going at it or whatever like this. Yeah, it looks like you were on the team then, Cam. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Tell me more about my life, will you? Hey, hey, <laughs> Jared. Listen, we don't have too many guys on here that played in both the USHL and the OHL. Yeah, I mean that just doesn't happen very often. You did that. And and the USHL is probably like way better now, now than it yeah. even was when you played, even though that wasn't that long ago. But like, how would you break down the two leagues? Like, did you feel like the OHL was that much better than the USHL? Um, I feel like the OHL was deeper. Like the top two lines in the USHL were they were good. It was good hockey, um, but I just felt like there was more good players in the OHL. Um, and the top end talent in the OHL was better than the top end talent in the USHL, I thought. Um, but the USHL was really, it was a really good league. And like, you, you got to understand, like, I remember back then, it was a few years before I got to Lincoln, like, guys were wearing no visors. Oh, yeah. Like, it was crazy. And like, you don't, like, I, I totally forgot that. So when I went there as a young guy, like, I was looking up, like, these guys were, I mean, they seemed old. Um, so yeah, it was a it was an awesome league. I don't know if you ever seen a game in Lincoln. It was it was we sold out every game. They had a huge light show. Like it was it was it was unreal. And I was in high school. Like I thought I was I thought I was, you know, King Dick. Cool. <laughs> yeah, like, it was the USHL for me was awesome. It was my first time away from home. Like I had a lot of fun, and and oh, yeah. we, Lincoln is was a great place to play. Um and and yeah, I was going to go to college, and like I said, college just wasn't probably the right path for me. And uh, I knew Mike Gallucci a little bit um, and I kind of wanted to stay in the, in the U S and everyone said, "Oh, you're one of those Americans that you pick where they go, either London or Plymouth. But um, no, I, I knew Gallucci and he traded for me and I got to Plymouth and, and Plymouth was great too. Yeah. But Plymouth wasn't like Lincoln. Like if you went to London or Windsor or, like Kitchener. You're, or Kitch, like, or Guelph, yeah. like you're, you're in like the mini NHL. Where Lincoln exactly. was kind of like that too, but everywhere else, because but but Plymouth was a nice rink, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like in your face fans and like walking around the city and people know you, like right? Yeah, exactly. it's like CompuWare is playing it's in like the rink over. I know it's really weird. <laughs> you would have dominated yeah, no, in Plymouth Windsor though, wasn't. Jared. <laughs> they would have liked you I there, loved, boy. No, well, the old barn in Windsor, it was the best, yeah. man. It was the best. Uh, but no, Plymouth wasn't like that. Um, I mean, they our crowds weren't great. We had we had the the same you know the the booster clubs or whatever you call them that were there all the time. But um, yeah, no, it wasn't even close to like Windsor, London, Kitch. Um, but we had a good team. We we went to the Memorial Cup my last year, so we we had a good team. So it, it started to grow a little bit. Um, but it was I, I loved playing there. I loved playing for Volucci. Um, You know he always had always had tough teams oh yeah so 
fit my style perfect and and he played me a lot and uh i got a lot better there hey uh conklin what? versus umberger that's that's so funny. over the soccer hey, ball i remember writing hey, about it like they were they like both lose like, that fight. <laughs> that's hysterical hey uh what about ricky nash we've had him on oh yeah he's like cool. how like cool as shit like was he cool as fuck he everybody kind of like follow his lead like how was he yeah, he he's awesome, man. He, he's he's a quiet guy. He's a real real like private guy. Um, but uh I got pretty close with him and we had a lot of fun together. He was uh he was great, man. He was such a good player. Um and now he's still around the organization. He's doing a lot of good things. He's uh yeah, he was he was definitely the the superstar here. Everyone everyone knew him. Did you deserve 3 games for your hit on Patty Maroon? I want to see that goddamn thing. Did you deserve three no. games for that? You know, it's funny. Someone showed me that. I'm like, now now that I'm coaching, I'm like, what the hell was I doing in the corner as a right winger? But <laughs> that move, I, I'd leave. I'd kind of sneak down from the point because guys coming. I mean, you can't really do that hit anymore. But guys coming around with their the net with their head down, you could pop oh. them. Like, Rafi Torres was the best at it. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. You know why I got three games for that? I think I was a repeat offender. Were you? Wasn't that before your suspension on uh, Belmar? Like, how, how oh, many suspenders did you yeah, suspensions it, it, did you have? Uh, so I got kicked out in my first NHL game, like in the second period. Ever? <laughs> yeah, my first NHL game ever. I got I got kicked out. I had a ton of family that I'll never forget it. Uh, I probably played like three minutes, and Travis Mullen was coming across the middle, and I I hit him a headshot. Uh, <laughs> It was either an elbow or shoulder, but yeah, I got kicked out. So I, I kind of had from the first game, I, I really kind of had to, I had to be careful on how I hit. Um, so yeah, I probably did deserve three games. To tell you the truth, <laughs> I didn't the think it was patty, that big of a hat. Then the, you, the then, patty hit wasn't that big of a deal. Then you fought him, like when he was in Anaheim. I think you fought him when he was in Edmonton. Actually, his first year in Edmonton, you fought him. And you caught yeah. him with that uppercut, dude. Like, I was watching a lot of your fights. I said to Cam this dude, morning. he throws uppercut bombs. I was like, dude, this guy threw more uppercuts than I can remember bombs. and landed uppercuts. Was that like your your signature your signature move during fights or what? Yeah, because you can kind of disguise it. Like, if you if you throw it right, you, the guy, like, if a guy sees it coming, he can kind of, you know, use his shoulder or his arm to block it. But, like, an uppercut, like, I would always try to get the guy, like, you know, kind of bent over a little bit, and then you can just kind of get an uppercut in there, and they wouldn't really see it coming. So you could you could get guys pretty good. Um, but yeah, man, I, I had I had pretty long arms for my height, so it, it helped me fighting the bigger guys. Cam, I, you had you had long arms too. Like you could hold guys out and when He's you're fighting the bigger. Feet. I got my my <laughs> feet smell. And my shoes are just like beat. I'm a hideous human being right now. I, just, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know how to describe myself. But I did have kind of long arms. But no. Like, yeah. But on the other, you almost caught me. I watched a couple of fights. God, you almost caught me a couple of times with uppercuts mm. where I just got my chin out of the way because I'm switching on you like an idiot. Yeah. I, yeah and I you think, fucking strung me knew, out, boy. Well, everyone knew I I, I couldn't throw a left. I, I was terrible at throwing left. So. If you switched on me, I, I was in trouble. And the one fight versus you, I knew I, I was ready for it. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll have to take a few. Um, but just hang in there. And, and, you know, you didn't embarrass me too bad. Yeah, but nah, listen, okay. Rittenhouse, listen. Rittenhouse. Like, you got you got Reaver with an uppercut, too. Oh. I'm curious, yeah. man, because, like, now that you're on the bench, you're coaching, like, he is – the king, you know, like, you know, he's the toughest guy in the league right now. He's got that reputation. Where yeah. would you put him in terms of guys you had to fight in during your during your playing career? Yeah. And, like, now he's, like, the toughest guy in the league. Like, dude, did you ever look at him as, like, wow, Reaver, Reaver is, like, truly one of the toughest guys in the league? Like, how you, would you look at him when you were fighting? I mean, I, I don't want to disrespect him at all, but he was – I didn't at the time. He was younger, though, too. Like, mm -hmm. You know, like he's way different. I fought him when I was in Anaheim, and he was he was I mean older now, and he was he was tough, like tough. But when he when he was in St. Louis, he was he was a young guy, like yeah. so. I was I was never like I was. I mean, I had there was McGrath and, and Peros and uh, Bugard and Orzy, DJ King. Oh, or those yeah, Colton Orr, like those were the guys that could hurt you. I never looked at. Uh, like I said, no disrespect at all because he's tough. Um, I never looked at him that way 
because he was he was just a young guy at the time. But now, now you see him, and yeah, he's he's definitely you know the top dog. Um, I do, you know what I do have to give because he's on our team now, so I'm going to pump his tires a little bit. But he doesn't he doesn't say much, or he's he's not out there. And but the Erica Branson man, you oh yeah, oh, yeah. I could put him against anyone in the league. Who'd he catch, or did he get caught and, by somebody? Who he, uh, he he fought twice this year, I think. I don't remember who, but I've seen him, man. He He's a big dude, and he he's tough. He doesn't fight as much. Um, he he plays quite a bit, but but that guy that guy's right in the top three. With you know, right now it's probably Reeves, uh, McDermott, uh, maybe Delorier, mm-hmm. and I put, put, I put Goody in there too. Luchik, but those, those, nah, you gotta throw Luchik, Luchik in there. He just knocked out yeah. McDermott. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah, that's Luchik. true. Yeah, yes, yeah, he knocked Luchik. him out. Yeah. Yeah. Can't forget about Luch. I fought Luch. I, I Luch was always a good. I, I like fighting him. I mean, he's awesome. I, he was tough, but yeah, we, we all. I always did. I did okay against Luke. Well, no one ever puts him in that category because Luchy. you know. Well, because he's yeah, he's do. not just no. a fighter. You know what I'm saying? Because he no, but he's a, one of the toughest players in the league. But he's also been a guy who could play Luchy's, over the years. He's a tough song. Scored yeah. thirty one year. You know what I'm saying? He's so people forget match. about him sometimes when you're talking about the toughest guys in the in the game. Hey, listen, um, I, I do want to ask you a couple things about Columbus real quick. So, so Johnny Hockey gets there, man. There was so much hype. Just yeah. how's the season been for him? Just trying to find his way and the team not having a whole lot of success and, and all of that. Like, what, what are you seeing from him? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's been a grind for everyone this year. I'm not going to lie. It's been a, it's been a tough year. Um, learned a ton, but Johnny's, Johnny's been awesome. Came as advertised, man. This guy can create stuff out of absolutely nothing. And, uh, and, it, and it's hard for him. He he came. I mean, he played with Kachuk and Lindholm for how many years? They were he was comfortable with them, and they mm-hmm. they, they the best lines in the league. And he comes here, and and with how many guys we've had in and out and switching around, I don't know how many different guys Johnny's played with this year. Um, but what, I mean, he makes everyone around him better. He's he's unbelievable at, at creating offense when there's really nothing there. Um, so yeah, Johnny Johnny's been awesome. He's he's a quiet guy. He comes to the rink plays hockey he leaves like he's that's him and uh he's he's awesome he's he's been really good for us and and uh hopefully here the next few years we start to build on it and uh he's an elite player so so we can't waste the best years of his career that's for sure and what about a guy like patrick line who he's a scorer he's hurt a lot man which you just cannot control you know like he He's just always one of those players for me, like from afar, you're like, man, he could he could be so much better. Like he came into the league. I've seen him score five goals in a game. He had an unbelievable rookie season. Like like yeah. how do you, how do you how do you like handle the challenge of trying to get the most out of a player like that who's so talented? Yeah, Patty's uh Patty's a different guy and he's 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 awesome. And Pat Patty loves loves hockey. And and I don't think people see that just because of the way his, his personality is. Um, but man, I've never, I've been around hockey for a while. Uh, I, I've never, I mean, I haven't seen too many guys shoot the puck like him. Like he makes goalies look silly. They, and sometimes it's not the hardest shot is released. Like he's unbelievable when he's on and he's scoring. And, uh, yeah, the biggest thing for us, we, we just, we try to keep Patty engaged. Got to keep him engaged. Um, he came up with the idea, him and one of the coaches about trying to play center. I don't know if you guys saw that experiment. Um, and he was lights out. And I think it was just because as a center, you got to be, you got to be on the whole shift. You can't mm. like as a winger, you can kind of get lost around the wall, but, um, he, he was awesome. And, and he got, he only played two games and got hurt, but, and he was, I think he was just excited about the challenge. And, uh, so to see that it was, it was really cool. And then he got hurt, which sucks, but, um, yeah, he's a, he's a top end guy and, and, to have those pieces between him and Johnny, and there's a few other guys here with Kent Johnson and Marchenko. There, like, there are pieces here, but you know what it's like. You can't. I mean, it takes experience to win in the NHL. It oh, is yeah. so hard to do it for 82 games. Like, I don't. It is so hard. Um, so that's why I'm always amazed by guys like Crosby and and, and Stamco, like these guys that have been doing it, winning every single year, playoffs after playoffs. Um, it's impressive. So. Like I said, we got we got really good pieces here. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but um, I'm looking forward to the challenge, and, and hopefully we start we start moving upwards uh, here in the future. 
Yeah, we're rooting for you, man. Like, truly are. Like, what do you do? Okay, so, like, so tonight you fly. You fly out today. You get in. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Who are you hanging out with? Is Shelly, Jody Shelly on the trip? Is he your buddy? Yeah. Like, what do you do? Yeah, I, I, I see Jody. Uh, every once in a while we'll go, we'll go out. Um, I don't know. It's Toronto, so probably just go. Uh, a couple of the, assistants, the other coaches will we'll go grab a beer, grab a bite to eat, watch a hockey game. Um, it's awesome, man. You know, you yeah, know, it's like, yeah, the NHL, I mean, you can't take a day for granted. It's, it's, but you don't have to, but you don't have to go. Okay. So you land in Toronto, you don't have to make, like, okay, I got, I got three hours of video. I'm going to, I'm going to watch by myself and <laughs> edit things for somebody or something like that. You're like, okay, I could chill. Mm-hmm. I could relax a little bit. Maybe I, I, have family I, here I, I gotta, I gotta go, go do I, some pre-scout. I, I gotta do like, you don't have to do shit when you land tonight. Let's say. Uh, no, t- sometimes you do, but, uh, it's man. Another thing I'm learning is just managing your time, man. Like yeah. it's all up to you. You got, you, you got your shit, you got to get done and, but no one's telling you when to do it. Like if you manage your time, right. And you get all your work done, you get, you got some time to yourself. So, um, yeah, like tonight we had the, we had the morning off. So I was able to get a, get some stuff done. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe go get a workout. What about what, so dinner? is your wife? Uh, how long have you been with her, by the way? We've been together a while now. I think we've been married uh, six years. Okay. Going on dating for a bit. So she knows your schedule. Was she like, damn, Jared Rittenhouse, <laughs> I want you to be around me. <laughs> you just retired. Our, you just retired. Can you <laughs> be around me with your handsome face and your beautiful hair? I, I love you. Uh, like, is she like pissed at your travel all the time? No, man. She. I mean, there's there's hard times, too. It's. You know, she's got two young kids at home, so it's there, there's times where, yeah, I, I get the phone call and uh, she's not in the best of moods. But oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. and you're and you're oh, hanging out at the Ritz that. at the Ritz Carlton, yeah, and, like yeah. getting get, a beer with the getting boys. a good night's sleep, I eating. Well, I always I Facetime my daughters, and I always like at dinner. I don't want to see the whole room, so I just kind of like stand up against the wall and Lauren, my wife, was let me let me see the room, you know, right on the. <laughs> Or whatever, and I hear kids screaming in the background. Oh, oh my god! I know, I know. It's, I know. A, it's all good. Uh, you gotta do, you gotta do, man. You're working, hey, dude. Hey, let me ask you this before we let you go, though. Yeah, Listen, get, gotta, the 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 situation, you know, man. You guys had that terrible tragedy. Yeah. Like, like I've known Manny Legacy for a yeah. long time. Like Cam has. Like yeah. the, he's such a great guy. Quiet. I, it, you know, it looks like you know Elvis has been going through a lot, which you could completely understand after experiencing what he went through, yeah. but. Just the situation with Matisse as an organization, from your standpoint, like, uh, how are you guys still getting through that? Yeah, that that was hard. Um, I didn't know Matisse real well, um, but I, I got to know him a little bit, and I, and I know Manny and Elvis. They were, you know, they're like a little family there, and they're really, really close. Um, so it was really hard on them. Um, and I think it's still Manny doesn't talk about it much, but I, I know that it's still it's still there and, and same for Elvis. They've, they've dealt with a lot and Elvis had another family member pass uh, this year. So it's, it's been tough and that's, that's stuff you, you can't really plan for. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it was a tragedy and the way it happened. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was really sad. He was a great kid. Uh, had a really bright future. It was a really good goalie. Um, always a smile on his face. So it's been tough. Um, it's been hard on everyone, but definitely those two guys. I think it it's been the hardest on. Yeah, God, no, no damn. doubt about it, man. Um, yeah, we we wish everybody the best. Yep. Hey, I was thinking about this earlier. Like, like Rick Nash had his jersey retired. <laughs> who, who yeah. who's the next one for Columbus? Like, do you guys have another one? Is that like you and Jody? Is Johnny Hockey going to have his jersey retired before he retires? Like, like who Jody, who's the next Jody guy? Might be the, Jody might be the most popular guy in the organization. Yeah, so really, I mean, we like. But you never know. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Um, it takes it takes a lot. Umberger, like Umberger. <laughs> throwing. I don't like them throwing. Like I was listening to something the other day. I don't love the the throwing the statues up and throwing jerseys in the rafters. Like I think that's really really special. So um, I don't know. I don't know who's next. We'll we'll see. Uh, obviously, Nasher's deserving of it. Um, but right now, I don't, I don't know. Well, you can't manufacture it, and you see the fact that you can't name one. And listen, I I, I love that same. answer because I agree with you. Like teams are yeah. just throwing up statues like left and right. Like 
Man, I mean, I just remember when I was a kid. Like, if a player had a statue, you you truly were like an iconic yeah, figure. Like you know, well, yeah, like not it's, not it's, just an all star. Yeah, it's like yeah, I mean, it, it's like Michael Jordan. Like that's the first name that comes. Like Wayne, that's what Wayne I, Gretzky. Yeah. yeah, like those guys. Like it, you know, maybe two or three guys ever. Like those are the kind of guys that I think of a statue. Um, not saying I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful and and. and and say guys aren't deserving of it, but it's just uh, I don't know. Those those are those are real important, I think. So um, I don't know. I mean, Felino's had a good career, Atkinson, but um, like I said, it, I think it takes a lot to to put your number up there. Yeah, no, I agree I'm with, with you, man. Boy. And, and I know listen, you're busy. We you, love we love yeah. the organization too, man. Yeah, we we know we you. know a lot of guys there. I've I've known Yarmo forever yeah. and yeah. JD, and he still has his family here in St. Yeah. Louis. His little grandson yeah. plays plays with my son, so. Great family and everything. So, man, we wish you guys all We're the best. For you, Basil buddy. McRae, too, man. Basil. His, razzle, dazzle, his, Basil. Yeah. Baz, we haven't even talked about Baz. Oh, Baz. Wait, what, do you got to, what do you have to say about Baz? <laughs> no, he's, I love Baz. He's, a, he's one of the best. He's awesome. Yeah. But, uh, we love his we no, love guys, Will, too. I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge media guy, but uh, you guys made it easy, and I appreciate you having me on. You guys are awesome. I listen yeah. to you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. It's It's awesome. Appreciate it. You're homeboy. the best, Jared. Do your thing. Thank you, Rittenhouse. You. Thank the... you, Jared Rittenhouse. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that. You, you can keep calling me that. All right. I will. All right. I will. See you, big dog. You're the best, man. Take Have care. A safe flight. See you, homie. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman and Bellman.com. B E H L M A N N. dot com. Get out there to Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. And get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the winter. All right, that was Jared Bull. Uh, great conversation, dude. He's a coach. I love the, uh, you can tell he's got that rapport with the players, man. You can tell that he's got the passion. You can tell he's got the patience. He's got the work ethic. All things you need to be a good coach in the NHL. Yeah, they're going to like him a lot, man. And they already do like him a lot. And I know that uh, the one-on-one sessions with Jared Bull and some of the players probably go, like, he probably gets a big kick out of that because they listen to him, dude. Mm -hmm. They respect the hell out of him. He was a great teammate, played a long time, and uh, he's doing a damn good job. Let me present a scenario for you. What if the coach was like, hey, Jerry, when you go meet with that player, find out what he's been doing in his off time. What's he been doing? He's been going out, whatever. And if that player says, yeah, dude, I've been doing this, doing that, and, like, he's telling Jared that in confidence, and then Jared goes back to the head coach, and the coach wants to know, like, how do you handle that, you think, if you're Jared Bull? Well, I think you got to be honest. Really? I think you got to be honest with it. Depends on how the coach. What if would... the player doesn't want him telling the coach? Well, then don't, don't do it. I mean. And what well, if the coach no, said, You work out. for the coach. You don't work for the player. You got that? You work for the coach and the organization. You don't work for the player. So there's a balance to it. So if there's something that you have to repeat to the hierarchy, you have to do it. That is your job. Now, there's ways to do it. And there's some things that you could sweep under the rug that you can handle yourself. You have to balance that. Mm-hmm. But you can't just neglect to go I don't know, and lie to him. Now you're no, in no you man's land. Because you know what? You'll get fucking fired. How tough was he? Very tough. Very tough. Look at our fights, man. I mean, he's a big boy, too. Yeah, he had a long reach. 6'3". Yeah. He's a Chicago boy, man. I feel like there's a lot of similarities to those who grew up playing in Chicago to St. Louis, you know? Although yeah. they've always been ahead of us, you know? Yeah, I but, guess. No, they always were. Like, I guess so. Well, not as much now, though. The the, the playing field has been leveled a yeah, little bit. But still, like, like the Chicago mission, man, they're still pumping out great players. I showed you a video today of a kid who's like 14 well, years old. Shit yet. Is he drafted? Is he playing? He's not old enough to get well, drafted. Well, then whatever. We'll wait. I've seen 50,000 kids like that. No, you wait. Oh, okay. No, you have, though, Andy. You played against them, didn't you? you 50,000? No, but one on every team. <laughs> one on every team growing up. There was a kid just like that. Dominant. Half of them did shit. The other half maybe went to college. The other, whatever. What if you went to college? I'd flunk out. Did the USHL ever draft you? Um... I was tendered with the North American League when I was young. Yeah, dude. but like the USHL. Yeah, I was young as there's not like I was young as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like they did when I was 15, 16 years old. I just turned. How 16. old were you when you went to uh, Windsor? Seventeen. Seventeen. I got drafted by Windsor too, third round, right? So I went from playing juniors in St. Louis to going to Windsor, to going to the Devils, to going to the Blues, to going to the Devils, to going to Nottingham. 
What's some Albany? Boom, 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 Albany, boom, boom. Albany. In Albany, mix it, but the Devils organization. Was right Albany there. the only American League affiliate you ever played for? Lowell. Because that was Devils, too. I played in Lowell. They, they moved. Hated it. hated it, yep. You so hated it? Like, oh, God, yeah. It was depressing. I was going through a weird time then, too. When I, I remember being in Lowell, trying to find painkillers so fucking bad that I um, I called a um, I called a, a dentist and said I have a toothache. I know. So soft. What? You're being soft. I'm fucking dying, dude. From a toothache? And <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. Oh and you're so God. out of touch. You're so out of touch. No. I was addicted to painkillers. I was withdrawing so bad that I wanted to kill myself. Oh. And so the only way to fucking coerce a doctor is to go to a dentist and say I have a toothache so he gives me painkillers, you asshole. Oh, you know what they call it? What'd so you, no, what would you call that before? That people doctor shopping. It? Doctor yeah. shopping. Exactly right. um, how many fights would you and Jared have had? Uh, eight, you didn't fight that many six, times? Seven. Or you did? Six, seven, maybe. Who won? Um, I th- we both It's not about fuck. winning and losing. No, we put, That's on a sh- your we, we put on a show for sure. We just put on a show. Do you remember having those conversations with him prior to the game? On the yeah. Day? Yeah. Yeah, I always did that. Are you one of these guys that has an issue with everyone being buddy-buddy? I will say this. I don't though. give a fuck anymore about anything, to be honest with you. I don't. So, so if you're buddy-buddy, like, as long as you want to try to kill each other during the play, I don't no, care. let me give you an example. I was... Um, Watching on the glass, uh, Blues Red Wings. Yeah, and there's a lot of relationships going yeah, on there. I get that. Yeah, but you would think the buddy buddy laughing on the ice would have been going on between like David. Perron. It wasn't. It didn't even involve David. It was more about the players from the Red Wings, who were like trying to laugh with like Nick Letty, who doesn't really show much emotion on the ice. It wasn't like he was like laughing back, or with Verona. It was just really weird, like, during scrums, like, kind of act, like, play acting, like, they were really trying to get each other in a scrum, like, mm, like, you yeah. do, like, in a pickup game on a, on a yeah. men's league. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, that sometimes can be yeah. a little bit yeah, annoying, because people much. are spending a lot of money to come watch a competitive. They want you to be serious. They want you no, I get that. to wear that jersey and try to kill the well, opposition. Well, they'd rather you be mean, you know, just be mean. And play. That's all. Don't play f- fake fighting. Yeah. No, I, you're I laughing get, at each I other. And I then you got that. a guy from the wings. I don't want to say who it was, but he's like laughing at the face-off dot to a, another player on the other day. I was just like, God. No, I, I get you on that. I, but like, you got to hide it a little bit. Do it during warm-up, whatever you got to do. I told you, it's only a matter of time in hockey before we start seeing players like switching jerseys and stuff like that, like, <laughs> like they yeah, do maybe. in the NBA maybe and the yeah, NFL. Maybe. Yeah. Well, as long as they beat the shit out of each other first and they do it, I don't care. Okay. Like center ice. At the end of the game? I don't care. It's like the only sport where they don't like intertwine with each other. I don't other want anybody's jersey. After it's nasty. The, I know. Disgusting. Have nasty ass jersey. I don't want that thing. But you know, like NBA players, they, they're on the I, court. I, I, Andy, and I know. NFL players, they're the on the field. Boy, I had to field. give it to Drake the other day. <laughs> oh, yeah. He gave a jersey to Drake. Drake's like, <laughs> Drake, Drake took the jersey and scrunched it up and drank the sweat because he yeah. loved it so much. Gross. So the football players, they kneel with each other. That's a longstanding tradition yeah, that's, when that's they pray, pray and stuff like well, yeah, that. They're gonna now they're killed. switching jerseys. They can't even get the jersey off, dude. You ever see them try to get a football jersey off? You yeah. can't even do it. Yeah. Baseball players, not after the game, but before the game. I mean, they are like Doesn't matter. Yeah. doing dances together and stuff like that. The pepper grinder. Hockey. Looks like they're beating their dick off. What? What do you mean, What? <laughs> What? God. Who's pepper grinding? Mean dude, huh? Lars Newt bar. Oh, the Cardinals. Like they, after they, they get on base, Japan. now they do the salt now shaker. Japan, Japan took it over, and they got little kids and like prime ministers of Japan, like <laughs> like they're beating their dick off. Okay, I, I, it's I, the I weirdest, stupid this. thing in the world. I don't know what is going on. They're acting like they're like shaking a pepper grinder, but they're oh. doing it in front of their crotch. And then Japan picked it up because why the are they baseball. doing it in front of their crotch? Is that this is the way they do it? Like uh, pepper, it's like you're beating. Didn't your dick the Cardinals off. do that? Yes, Andy. So now and then the World Baseball assault. Classic, Lars played for Team Japan, and they mm-hmm. beat everybody. And he did a pepper grinder, and then little kids from schools in Japan are doing it like, yeah. and it looks like they're beating their fucking wee wee's off. That's all. Okay, and it looks stupid. Well, I, I have not seen that. I've well, been open watching. Your eyes up no, I've been watching a documentary. Stop watching. You know, like, I've been watching a documentary. I don't know what you you don't watch anything. You're <laughs> on the on the road doing stuff all day, <laughs> fixing, doing this, picking up kids, doing that. Dude, you don't do no. I don't know how you 
pay attention to hockey. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I guess. Well, I know you don't pay attention to anything else because you'll read one thing and you'll like repeat the fucking storyline for 25 minutes. And I'm like, oh, God. It's yeah, not okay. true. Like you found something. Like on the way over here, like I got to, I got there's got to be something else I could talk about. Let me see. Let's see. New York Times. Oh, this thing happened. That's a good idea. I should <laughs> it's exactly what you should do. start doing that. Exactly. You what think you that's do. why I watched the documentary on Kyle? Yes. So we could talk about and it. And I and I get that, and I don't mind that. But like, hey, but you know what? Sometimes that documentary is not even that big of a deal. Right. Like, find a good. It one. was a huge deal, and you no, need to not. watch it with Kate tonight. Who cares about that kid? Just watch it today. Uh, all right. and get back. To I me. will. Right. Hold your breath. I will. Just get back to me, will you? I will. Yeah, just just watch it and get back. Okay, to me. man. Let me know what you thought about. Uh, Cam, the Cam and Strick podcast is brought to you by what? Hair Club. And HairClub.com. Go there today. HairClub.com slash Cam and Strick. Um, there are so many options. The options are limitless. Uh, sky's the limit, as a matter of fact. So go check it out. They've got great payment options, payment plans. Ask about the pill and do it today. Yeah, man. Easy peasy. No question about that. First form and firstform.com. Be like Nick. <laughs> Who's actually just a really good dude. Well, that's what it means. He's just a really, really, really good just dude. Just be a good guy. Yeah. Be nice. To you people. know, first form Help is not out. just for people who look like Nick. It's no. for people who look like everybody. Look like you. you know? Sure. Although, that's probably not the best example. I mean, well, yeah. you could be like a trucker or something like that. Yeah. Just, or you could be just who, a skinny kid. You could be somebody who, doesn't look, who doesn't look very healthy. And wants to work out for the first you time. You could be somebody who doesn't look healthy. Maybe their wife's getting a lot of attention when they go to parties and stuff. And you're oh. like, fuck, I got to fucking get my know. groove on a little bit. My wife's Maybe hot. your wife's getting a lot of attention at, wife's uh, hot at, and you're not. at field hockey. Like, yeah. No shit. There's and a it, lot of attention that goes on. You're coming with me to the next game. I'm it, not it, allowed it, to be around. Field hockey women. has become my favorite sport. I had I'm no idea. To be around hot Although women. they blow the whistle every uh, three seconds. I don't know what's going on. I, 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 it's the only sport I could ever go to, Cam, and I have no clue what's happening. I put the ball in the net, probably. Homie. No, but they blow the whistle every two seconds. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Why don't you write him an email? I need, like, a t- tutorial. Yeah, like, say, hey, help me with this. My daughter's playing. I don't know what's going on. Oh, my allergies are killing me right now. Right you now. look stoned. <laughs> no, Did you hit this out of my pocket? No. It fell out of I my pocket. I wouldn't touch that nasty thing. Cam gave me COVID. No, I didn't. I don't get it, actually. I was fine. I'm COVID free, man. I think uh, I think I was born with the vaccine, dude. I I, I fight that stuff. How many uh, jabs did you get, homie? What does that mean? How many uh, how many jabs did you get from Ouchie Fauci? Did you see when he went to that person's house? Uh, oh yeah, that was, that was a little while ago. In the while in the hood, ago. dude. The guy, the guy was owned like, his ass. He's like, "What's going on here? You're not supposed to know what's going on. You're supposed to be stupid. What is going on? How how dare you know?" How dare you have an opinion? Dude, they no, kept, the, they here, kept the camera on him, even when he got in the car, and he looked so defeated. Ouchie Fox is like, he's not supposed to know. He's a very good friend of mine. <laughs> I'm downtown. How dare he know? <laughs> Fuck him. Uh, no, that guy no, owned no, his Fauci's life. Ouchie's great, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he's a hit at parties, too. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. He's, he, he's not no, a robot. He he's loves, not a robot. He loves yeah. to get down. Nah, he loves to get down real. with it. He's real. No, he's Fauci gets down with it. Oh, yeah. You would like him. You, you and your buddies at a Creep Horror Racket Club. <laughs> Praise him, probably. You got, you got murals of him in your house. They You pray to him like he's a fucking god. Probably give him a... <laughs> some of these teams would give him a statue. Jesus Christ. Ouchie, Fauci. Get out of here. <laughs> Fauci. How <laughs> much money has he made? Oh. I mean, you think he's a minority owner in Pfizer? So guys, don't tell anyone, but I am a uh, investor hey, in look Pfizer. Look at Pfizer sponsors. Look at this. Look what they sponsor. What are they sponsoring? Just, 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 just keep it out. Oh, well, tell me, tell me what they're sponsoring. It's just, we don't need to get it. Just what, all name one game. thing. Drag shows to this. Really? Uh, oh God. Okay. Crazy. Um, nothing it's wrong, all crazy. Nothing wrong. It's all with good. That. Nothing wrong with that. Well, if there's young kids there, there is. Okay. Would you want your kids to be at a drag show? No. I don't care about drag shows. Fuck, I'll go to one, but I wouldn't want my. Little Chloe to be there or Ty. Why would they be there? Because they're allowed to. Where? What do you? Oh, you are. Oh, God, Andy. All right, we don't need to get into Are this. children going to drag yes. shows? Yes. It's well, what parents busy. are sending their kids to drag shows? You tell me, dude. I don't see it. It's happening. 
Okay, well, my kids have not been to any. No shit. They better not. I'm just saying, in and general. Who cares about drag? I'll go to one. I don't care. But, like, your kid, there's got to be an age limit. That's all. No like a deal. requirement? All. Age requirement. Yes. Not or, limit. I'm sorry, age requirement. requirement. Absolutely. They had to shut one down in Chesterfield fucking two weeks ago. Kai killed that poor everybody, 70 Because everybody comes up, everybody's like, wait, there's all ages? And you're having a drag show? So people protested, and they had to shut it down in Chesterfield. All ages? Day. Yes. So weird. Well, I'm not quite up to date on that one, Cam. I've been it's too busy good. making my first you form got, shakes. Just keep an eye out. It's not a big deal. Just keep an eye out. I you got understand. young kids. Just keep an eye out. Yeah. That's all good. I, I'm, listen, am I, am I free Well, you're kind of like aloof to a lot of things. In my free time, I'm making first form shakes. I know, man. It's all good. No big deal. I'm just keeping I'm eating out. bars, bro. Yeah. Come on. Stop by and have a bar, dude. All right. <laughs> will, you, will you stop by and have a shake? No, I'm going to go home and have one. Why would I stop by? Stop by and have, have a, a shake. Have a bar. Yeah, you got right, first right. form bar. I'll be right over. I got the veggies and the greens. I got, I got, got everything. Firstform.com slash camera Go there today. Bellman and Bellman.com. Even if they're out of sushi, man, they're going to give you the best customer service you'll ever get. At Bellman, you get no what? Swing and dick. They're located in Troy, Cam, in Troy, Try. Missouri. Where? Troy. Troy, Missouri. It's uh, very close to St. Louis. It's a beautiful uh, drive out there as well. And uh, they got they got the best selection. Everybody gets qualified, Cam. Everybody gets qualified. Yeah, you got bad credit. So you have bad credit. Yeah. It's a no, no it's a non issue. It's all good. Um, and at Bellman, you get no swinging dicks. And uh, say hi to Danny boy. What up, Danny? Say hi to uh, Kenny. Kenny, what up, homie? Say hi to Dale. Dale. What up, Dale? Um, by the way, get back to first form real quick. Get that app. Download that app. Download the app. You need to get that app. Easy peasy. Firstform.com. Get the app. But Bellman and Bellman.com, man, they have the best selection anywhere. They got the Buick GMC on one side of the street. On the other side, Cam, very close. You got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Yeah, so man. they got something for everybody. Got it all. Get yourself a nice ride in time for the spring and the summer. Maybe you'll even pick me up in the Jeep. I'll bring a couple yeah. a couple bars and we can go cruising, you know? Yeah, I'll drink protein shakes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um of course, Sparks and Sparks.com, S-P-A-R-X. Say hi to Steve Jones. Hey, Stevie. He's the man, dude. Almost every NHL team is traveling with a Sparks machine. Don't have Seth sharpen your skates and ruin the weekend. And you wonder why your kid sucked and didn't perform and he's falling down all over the ice, losing an edge. Well, there's a reason for it. Uh, so just make sure you do what you need to do to make sure your kid performs at the highest level. And take it in your own hands, man. Do it where it's convenient. Get your own skate sharpener. I mean, if you would have told me 20 years ago, Cam, I'd have my own skate sharpener in my house, I'd never believe you. So it truly is incredible. Get that Sparks and get it today. And use that promo code Cam and Strick. It's going to save you more money than Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Hell yeah. Uh, and gel sticks and gelsticks.com. It's a weighted stick. So when you start stick handling and shooting, you go out there for the ga- game, Cam, the, 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 pu- the puck feels like a little golf ball, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's Speaking easy, of man. which, we're going to play some golf very soon. Yeah, no, I know. I was going to do it over the weekend, but I didn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to golf on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, um, we felt like shit. Well, we've got those auction winners that we're taking out too. So. That's fine. I, so I, I mean, I need like a warm up. Can you? I was thinking this no. the other day in the uh, a clubhouse, they should have a uh, one of those things, a range. They, they, they so you tell you how many yards you're away from the golf cart, the, you donkey. They got on the golf cart. That people always. Will you have make that. sure you find They'll that? Always have, have that for one, me dude. when oh. I come golfing. Yeah, you need it. Okay, have that for me. Uh, and get that gel sticks. I may even use that gel sticks golf club. Before I go out there on the links and go out there and swing and hit them around. You know what I'm saying, yeah. Cam? Yeah, I'll give you all the help you need. Okay, buddy. appreciate that. Gelsticks and gelsticks.com. All right, this has been episode number 232. Wow. With uh, Jared Rittenhouse Bowl. <laughs> awesome conversation, man. We appreciate his awesome, time. Dude. We love and you, And for Jared. joining us on the Cam and Strick podcast. Check out our Instagram. Check out our Twitter. Check out our website, camandstrick.com. If you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Hey. Great having you. Check out all the previous episodes. Find something that, uh, you know, a player or something you want to listen to. Uh, listen to ERA. Uh, you know, could be a score. Could yeah, be a Hall of Famer, players. man. Yeah. Could give be us anything. some uh, ideas. And we'll, get, yeah. we'll get a hold of them. We'll get them yeah. on. Like but we even always previous do. episodes, man. Find oh, something yeah. that you like. Out too. We got such a variety for everybody. Although, when I tell you guys to give us people mm-hmm. that we had on the fucking podcast, yeah. You give me people that we've had. That we've on the already guy had. Podcast. I've experienced Stop doing that. Look through the list mm-hmm. and then find a guy. Because Andy and I sit and we talk for hours like, who, who, who? We write all these guys down. Help us with that. If there's anything else you guys want us to change, let us know. We love all you guys. All we want to do is entertain you. Help our sponsors out because they'll keep this damn thing going. And plus, they're great anyway. 
leave messages. I'll I have my shit open, man. You could ask me goddamn anything, and I'll answer it. We love all you guys, man. Thanks for listening. No question about that. All right, have a great day.